welcome to TPK Roleplay. And tonight we continue our series of rotating one shots wherein we uh, go out and continue our work for the Harpers uh, to investigate mysteries within the realm. Tonight's session is based on Blind Cavern, written by DM Dave on Patreon. I am Luke Locke, and I will be your dungeon master. Proper if you want to start and players go around and introduce yourselves. You are muted. That's what happens. I did a good job and I was muted during the intro. Hi, my name is Proper Nerdy. I am a staff member at TPK Roleplay and I made lots of pretty pictures and videos, including the one you just saw. Um, I am playing Nick Kringle Spencer. The what am I? I am a rogue uh, satyr. And um, it's always been so long since I last played. To my right is Ikaj. Hello, folks. I am Ikaj the Orc. I will be playing the Goblin Artificer Kabu Del. Uh, this was actually the second uh, session in a row that I've gotten to play, so I am on a winning streak. Um, I'll go ahead and uh, pass it along to um, Sir Heck. Hey, guys. It's me, Sir Heck a lot. You know, I'm here not dying from the second dose of the covid vaccine uh back at it again with lenore the air ganassi rogue uh kicking it over to ty hello everyone i'm ty rent i can decide what i wanted to call myself uh i will be playing uh ego the loxodon cleric um it's very fun to actually have a cleric in the campaign now so uh hopefully we don't die yeah. um Turk. All right. Uh, hey, how's it going? I am Turk, or Turk Accented on Twitch and Twitter. I'll be playing Ulrich of Dunval, uh, the human uh, cavalier fighter. Should be a whole bunch of fun. Uh, fully armored himbo is ready to smack something in the face. Uh, but with last, but certainly not least, I'm going to throw it over to Al. Cheers, mate. Hey, folks. It's me, Al the Biffa, and I'm playing Chauncey Portly Fellow. Everyone's favorite pint-sized mark of hospitality creation bard. Yeah. Right, there we are. Are you ready to go now, folks? All right, off we go. You thought you didn't have Andy. I had Andy all along. It was the fool I, here. You lot. I was convinced you just shattered some glasses. <laughs> Same, <laughs> the crash, the my God. I did my own slowly, don't you know? <laughs> <sighs> all right. Um... <laughs> With that, <laughs> we will take you over to the Harper's hideout, uh, where not as we as we Hamish and Lenore are just returning, uh, and we'll probably see Nick uh, outside getting out of his uh, wagon, um, and Nick, you carry with you. Uh, the news that adventurers have gone missing. Lenore, I'm very glad to see you once again. How have you been, good friend? Uh, Nick, was it? Um, I do not think uh, we have more f uh, formally uh, been acquainted. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. That um, is the problem with these... Harpers constantly alone, constantly in the field, you know. Yeah, I have not uh, seen you in the hideout as much either. Well, I have my own duties, my own quests. The Harpers are important to me, of course. Their, their creed is pretty much how I live my life, but, you know, from time to time I, I like to come back and visit them, but I really wish today's we're under more normal circumstances. It seems, well, people like the Harpers have been disappearing. That is fair. I was uh, not expecting to go on an errand with uh, not as we as we Hamish. Uh, so uh, we have just gotten back. Um, I also have some news. Uh, so we should probably go inside uh, to talk about it. Uh, Nick will approach Nas Weasley Hamish and give him his familiar bear hug. Ah, oh, man. Glad to be back, dear 
prestigious tavern. Where did you uh, wander? Where did you wander off to? Oh, we went off to see a hag. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, <laughs> it's too. Uh... <laughs> Just listening to Lenore do her French accent and it's all gone. <laughs> really? uh, <laughs> you a hag. I hag uh, over in a bookstore and he uh, will kind of pale a little bit as he says that. <laughs> you can always trust the lover of books. I'm sure it was lovely. Uh, after you guys, after you. Gross. All right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There we go. Mm -hmm. Oh, not as well as we hang it. Ego. I doing, see you friend? made it out here. Yes. <clears throat> I uh, wanted to make sure your uh, compatriots were not uh, too alone in your absence, but uh, it's very nice to have you back, my friend. I thank you for taking care of them while I was out. Of course, of course. Uh, I, I trust the adventure was um, fruitful and full of uh, not too many books. Uh, there are a lot of books, but uh, Lenore did most of the learning and the, and the reading. Lenore. Good. Well, <coughs> Do you have something for us? I figured I would stick around for a while. Uh, retirement is, well, boring. It's true. Uh, uh, I am going to go introduce myself to your friend here, but uh, let me know if you have a job or <laughs> as he walks away. <clears throat> I believe Nick said he had something, but Lenore's got to do her, her passing around the info from the hag. Uh, Lenore, is it? Maybe. Hello. Uh, my, my name is Ego. Uh, I will spare you the longer form of my name. It's a tongue twister for most. Um, I trust you had a good uh, journey and found the hag to be in good f good company. Hey, it, it was. It was uh, really enlightening in more ways than one. Um, yeah. Um, there were a lot of uh, resources that she was able to point us to, um, so I think we should get that group together to um, actually yes. talk about it. Yes, um, very, very good. Uh, if, you, if you have information, <laughs> let's let's not tarry. Uh oh, I'm in true play again. Chauncey, my dear, I need something sweet. Oh, well, my heart is heavy. A lot of imagination. I'll do as best I can, sir. I try to rustle up some food as fast as possible, but peoples keep coming in. <laughs> well, you're going ah, to need to get out of your way. You're going to have to even cook a little bit faster. I think we're going to need you in a bit. Oh, hey, Mish, I really should head downstairs and tell the others. I have some uh, bad news. Mike, should we, we, should we follow you down there? Again. What was that, Chauncey? Nothing, sir. I was saying how definitely not understaffed you lot must be to be relying on little me again. I was so very helpful last time out that no wonder you're calling for my services. <laughs> Chauncey, I'd rather have slow service than poor service any day. Please take your time. Your wares are always so delicious. Slow service is poor service, sir. <laughs> I do my best. Uh, Ego will poke his head and into the door. The fact that you are literally moving yourself yeah. around the kitchen over and over again. <laughs> this is commitment to character. 
out. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Ego's going to poke his head into the door. Uh, Chauncey, would you mind uh, putting a, a spot of tea on and uh, bringing it down? Uh, I do Wait, sir, I... what kind of tea would you like? We got Earl Grey, we got Sleepy Time, we got uh, we got breakfast tea, what, you need to let me know, we got green tea, we got a little bit of chai there, we got, well, we got, what's this, some sort of infusion of some kind, oh, we got some sort of a lovely, like, a, oh, I don't know, some sort of, oh, is, is, uh, are there some, oh, is British, uh, oh, uh, I, I, I need to know more instructions, sir. Just, uh, just Earl Grey will be fine. And, uh, oh, right find... you are, sir, I think I got some in the back of the cupboard somewhere, so... Okay, f find your way down to the war room uh, and find us, please. Oh, uh, sir, was that by the pot or by the cup? By the pot, Chauncey. Oh, right you are, sir. I'll be down in just a jiffy. Down to the war room, down to the war room. If everyone starts gathering down there, uh, not as we as we Hamish will uh, let out the chime so that everyone knows uh, to gather. Come on, bud. It's time. Midway through banging on a uh, fine piece of metal that seems to kind of shine almost through the uh, hot embers. Ah, oh, hell, I can't. I can't but what, do you got anything I could suspend this in the air or something? I just... I mean, I can see if uh, MP will hold it up for you, but uh, no, I don't know. No, we're going to fucking need MP, aren't we? Ah, shit. I... All right, uh, and he walks over to the uh, water, and he's going to get, like, one clamp he's holding and, like, get a clamp on that clamp and then clamp a second clamp and just create this kind of, like, weird system to dunk it and keep it <laughs> suspended. I mean, Kit could probably give you a hand. Kit, go over there and uh, hold on to what he wants you to hold on to. No, 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 because Kit's going to come as well, don't he? Well, okay, so you're just leaving it to hang I'm on. Just yeah, gonna, okay. I'm just going to leave it here, and then when I come back, I can actually finish the damn thing. Oh, yeah. No, I got a, I got a system in place for that. If anyone touches my stuff, I beat them. So. <laughs> oh, damn. All right. Well, it remain me not to go with rummaging through your things again. Again? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. You're lucky I'm a friend. <laughs> you're lucky I'm lying. <laughs> I All right, let's think. get let's. Uh, I think I hear that uh, bell going. I think there's some uh, I, some stuff going on. Some other heads to kick in or not. <laughs> hey, last one has a rotten egg, eh? I will literally outpace you several times over. Yeah, we'll see about that. And Kabu pops his uh, his wheels out of the heels of his boot and skates off <laughs> down the stairs. I'll activate my boots of elven kind. <laughs> And not no, live to no, see boys, life. Both pretty. Well, <laughs> I don't know. Kabu's gonna have a hard time wheeling down with all the people throwing their panties at him. He's <laughs> healing, healing down. Yep. Yeah, we're we're in the war. Those out was fast. Ego, out of nowhere, you're just gonna be struck by lightning. <laughs> 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 You know, uh, if, I had a, if I had a nickel for every time I was struck by lightning, it would be two nickels, which isn't a lot. But it's weird that it happened twice. It's, 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 it's a bit shocking. Oh, God. You're next. Okay, now, now. <laughs> down with the, uh, the terrible puns. Oh, I thought they were punny. Okay, got some bad news for any Harper here and any across the land. I will tell you that. <laughs> now, uh, I'm not usually one to believe in rumors, but um, it's definitely true that over in uh, White Peaks, there are adventurers just like all of us that are going missing. And um, some of my contacts, at least the more reliable ones, tell me it's something called Skull Collector. It sounds ridiculous, but God knows of a name like that, it has to be. A doozy. But they're going missing good men and women and of all sorts. I just can't see it happen anymore. So I thought I'd come to you all, the harbors. I right. say the skull collector? That is very ominous. Is it just like one individual they call the skull collector? Or is it like an organization they call the skull collector? Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, he's I wish I could teeth, tell you. Maybe. I wish I could tell you more. Uh, the whispers are very far and few between. People go missing, and then nothing is left behind. Oh, especially not the skulls. I don't even want to think about what a name like that could mean. Well, it probably means he collects skulls. Very dramatic name. Yeah. In any case, I do not like it. Um, I have some uh, different news. Um, I guess perhaps not necessarily good or bad. Um, but uh, the errand that I uh, went on with not as we as we Hamish. Um, to uh, get more information on what's been happening. Um, more about uh, these books that we keep finding, right? At least the one since uh, the uh, warriors of Sahanin. Um, yes. Uh, you know how we were theorizing that uh, it was to commune with fair? We held that somewhere. It, it's not exactly precise. It's more of a means of control. It's not just words, but names. Um, I don't know if you've heard with the uh, fae or demons or devils, any sort of uh, the like. Um, but uh, it contains their names, and there is power in that. Um, the Yugoloth that uh, we had mentioned before, it was at the head of a massive army. There's not much known about that, uh, not yet at least, uh, but there was a war. And uh, yes, at the head of it was that Yugoloth. Um, and uh, he had these books um, and the shields of keeping that uh, we have yet to really know about or find. Um, were the ones to uh, fight against this army and uh, keep the books away from flying hands of different kinds. Um, just a little more enlightening. Um, I'm not sure what to make of it yet, but uh, definitely new information. Any idea how many of these uh, books there are? You said uh, demons and uh, fae and... Uh, that I do not know. Um, I've only seen the one that uh, Luke had. Um, unless there, there are others. Have you? Oh, we just got another one. Another? Like a week ago. Yeah. Yeah, Rory's got it. We'll give it up. It also the the important thing is Roy's still here. So I consider that a win. Not as we as we here is just going to look a little concerned. Rory's got a book a keeping here hey yeah he's keeping it here yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah right hmm. is that, that is the only concern is that okay is. um <laughs> perhaps i mean i guess it's safer with us for now um in um, comparison to others but uh um not entirely sure. Um, is the uh, full of extent of its power? It just um, it contains <laughs> names, and we are not sure how many or uh, the nature of the things that it uh, has the names of. Um, it's made the bath all fucky. At least any time he's in it. Well, it's just make certainly... sure he's all right before or er, after I send you out. On your task, just is he is he all right? Is he fine in the heat? Yeah, hey, uh, from when I took talk, uh, talked to him last time, he just wanted to make sure that the book was here with the hoppers. You know, figured that's the uh, safest place to keep it. Perhaps <laughs> is, is a fair there amount of reason to that. that uh, is that uh, you found recently? Was it just the book or? Um, well, it was, it, was kept, information? it was kept in the ruins of uh, what looked like some kind of a cultist group, uh, some kind of a ocean uh, cult of the crashing wave, I believe. So uh, I'm 
guessing it might have had something to do with that. The cult uh, wasn't there anymore. It doesn't look like it had been there for quite a while. So uh, whatever they were wanting to do didn't happen. At least that, uh, that was stopped. That's uh, very bad. Um, hmm. Not sure what to make of it right now, but... Uh, if, hey, but th th there's people going missing they in are, the mountains. They are missing. So people, if we could, so if we could do that instead. Hey, uh, the White Peaks, you said, Nick. Pardon? Yes. I swear, the I'm sending you. It's not related, then. Is it, is, it, is it a coincidence, or have you heard these rumors, too? I haven't heard anything. I've been off with the Lenore, but uh, I'll look it up and send you to the right place. Uh, and he'll go over and, and like touch the proper uh, runes to activate for the White Peaks for you guys. The Stargate, you mean? <laughs> seven. To activate the Stargate? Uh, Chevron 7 locked, um, and it will activate for you guys. Uh, yeah, it's just nobody stand directly in front of it. We've yeah, all no seen what happens. <laughs> we know the rules. The uh, U.S. military wouldn't let me anyway. <laughs> all right. Uh, this should send you where you need to go. I'll pop it again. Maybe every day. Hopefully you can find out what's going on. Right. Keep an eye on Roy. <laughs> he's he's just gonna his eyes are gonna play hi <laughs> I will and so Nick oh, will Rick's venture into the Stargate alright um, Kabu and his machines jump through come on Chauncey you're up this time let's go right there sir shall I bring the tea with me Oh, I'll take that. And he'll reach his giant uh, elephant hand down and just palm the kettle and then wrap his trunk around it and start walking towards the the gate. Notice we hear Mish. Notice we hear Mish. And I've got me cutlery and I've got me cherry goop. Right, I think we're good to go. Uh, you're a big lad now, Chauncey. We're asking you to do the big boy tasks. Next, you'll meet sous chef. And in we go. We go. All right. Off we go. Uh, in the guys... world yonder. Well, oh, it's probably very white. It's grandmother's house. <laughs> you know. Like a Skrillex concert. <laughs> We all went very different directions with that. <laughs> I, oh my goodness. Um, okay, so you guys uh, will come out of the portal. Crumbs. Uh, north of the moon sea, between the barren and desolate desolate tortured lands to the north and the grassy steppes of the ride to the south lie the white peaks the towering mountains stand capped in snow and ice seemingly above the reach of the seasons below the wind and snow whips around you the cold cutting through your clothes each step through the knee-deep snow takes more out of you the warmth of summer becoming a distant memory Drag you all over. Mm. Ah. This is refreshing and maybe the worst way possible. Ugh. It's certainly bracing. So you pad your armor, folks. That's why you wear armor, too. Mm. It's also why you wear a nice coat everywhere you go, just in case. I hate to have a good cold. Nothing quite like the cold. Thick skin and all. Anyway. So, where are we going? Who are we meeting up with? Skull Collector, right? We're gonna go meet <laughs> him in Basher Head and 
We're gonna go collect their skull, you're saying. <laughs> It'd be ironic, but gruesome. We call that ironic, yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm gonna do a perception check to kind of get the lay of the land since we just kind of. Yeah, do you want to do survival as instead, or do you want to do perception? Uh, I don't think I have survival, so I will do perception. Hello. Look at you. That's a 25. 25. Okay, so with that, you're actually going to notice uh, a sort of a stamped down path in the snow to where it's actually been kind of crushed down over repeated footfall to where it's almost a slick ice now. Um, heading up towards the highest peak in this mountain range. Uh, it's one of the tallest and most dangerous mountains in the White Peaks. Anyone familiar with the area would know it's called the Knife. Ice and snow surround the peak and fall from dark, heavy clouds. And a chill fog hangs in the air. Right, so where are we going? Well, um, our luck would have it uh, across this bridge that I'm sure we'll give out as soon as we step on it. Right, so I'm going to go across before you do, because, well, I'm not going to say it out loud. Well, maybe we should phenomenal. see uh, what we are working with exactly before just uh, going across. Um, I would like to investigate the bridge <laughs> and see what we're working with. I will Absolutely. stand with my hands on my hips and just look very, like, <laughs> fine. <laughs> you don't need none of your attitude. All right, all right. <laughs> that is my attitude is character Despite, with that 28 investigation, despite its rickety looking nature, uh, you are actually able to tell that the path leading up to it and seemingly stretching from the other side of it uh, looks pretty well traveled by thick, heavy boots. Uh, so it seems capable of supporting possibly quite a large number of well outfitted creatures. Are we good to go? What if I'll travel on this last, uh, was also quite large. I, th I think, uh, they're going to be good. Uh, oh, no. Just be careful, you know? Fantastic. I'm gonna just, like, start walking across it. GM, these boots, uh, how large are the feet that inhabit them? Uh, you looking down at them? You investigating him? You measuring him out? Yes. More so, um, very simply putting my foot next to it and seeing what the size comparison would be. Ah, I see. You're gonna make me pull up the chart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one of the many. Yes. No, not necessarily, but it's like, you know. Mm -hmm. Are these Nikes? <laughs> oh my God. They appear to be good, sturdy, uh, almost war boots. And let's see, uh, you would actually, they are smaller than yours. Uh, quite a few of them. There do appear to be a set that seems similar, possibly even larger. Okay. <laughs> but nothing, like, immensely larger? Not too immensely, no. Good news, everybody. I have ruled out frost giants from the menu. Well, yeah, evil. <sighs> oh, the giants. I kick some snow. Fine. <laughs> Was the dragon not enough? No, you know, you gotta fight some giants and dragons in your stories, no, don't you? 
That just feels. That's uh, that just what they call the game, no? Dragons and giants. What about yeah. if he's a baby giant? Then his feet would be all little, wouldn't they? <laughs> well, I'm not gonna fight a baby. <laughs> all right. Well, if the bridge is fine, I'm just gonna go for it. So. Yeah. Just come across. I'm already over here. Yes. Uh, it seems very sturdy as you walk across it. Um, and you guys are able to, ahead, catch glimpse of a cavern opening. Is that where the path seems to be going from the bridge? It is where uh. the path seems to be going. And uh, would anyone here be familiar with this area? A knife, a like ice peak, white peaks no. in the white peaks north of the moon sea. Nope. Up near Nick's travels. Nick, you would be familiar with the cities and kingdoms around here, but I don't know how much you've made say up into the mountains. That Nick's traveled f f far across the lands, but I doubt he's ventured into the cliffs of uh, uh, the mountains. Could Roll I a do history it? check for me. Uh, could, Nick. I, could I make a D, like a flat D20, like hard check to see if my Da, uh, who is like an adventurer, had like told me a story about this? Go ahead. Um, he's he's visited many a city and maybe he's heard a tale or two. I did get a twenty for my history check. All right, both of you would know that in the White Peaks north of the Moon Sea, that there is supposedly a passageway through part of the knife uh, that kind of is a set of subterranean caverns in the ice that some adventurers and travelers will use. However, they are known to be quite treacherous and an excellent spot for opportune ambushes. So why do people travel through it? Because getting it's, over it's very hard. Yes. You, so, so you said it's partial though. What is that? What do you mean by that? It skips over the peak. It's It doesn't really go down deep into the mountain. It is not a dwarven gotcha. cavern. It's not at the base, but it, you know, it halfway up kind of yeah. thing. It okay. removes the need for mountain climbing gear over the peak. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Ulrich's like, I think my dad went through, was mentioning something about this. Like, there was some kind of song he used to say, like, I forget, like, the rest of the verses, but I think I know the big part of it is just secret tunnel through the mountain. Secret, secret, Inspiration. secret. Secret, 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 secret. He was a bit on the sauce when he said it. Secret tunnel. Isn't that that love song? Ah, oh, you know, he might yes, have been. Yes, always uh, when about the uh, traveling girl, she'll give you uh, broken, broken hearted. That is the one I know, not, not the tunnel though. No. Hmm. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but my dad went through some, well, he was talking about once he had to go up to 10 towns and uh, I think it was 10 towns. Was it Hell. 8 towns at the time? Oh, uh, that's way west. Or, yep, way west. Something tells me we ain't gonna be finding love in this here tunnel. Oh, I'd never write it off, Gabby. <laughs> <laughs> but wherever yes. we're heading, for some reason, we're <laughs> heading towards this this uh, I almost called it a tavern. This pathway through the mountainside. It is destined to be unbelievably dangerous. Well, so many places for someone to hide and ambush us. So many ways to get trapped, cornered, all sorts. Yeah, and it looks but, like we might be going into this here cavern, which means, you know, possibility of more traps and whatnot. So. Let's do stay on our toes, for yeah, sure. Though I'm sure if the Harpers have a reason to send us here, we should enter anyway. You're on ice, don't you want to plant your ankle, your uh, heels, though? Being on your toes and ice is not good. You slip more. Oh, I... 
That sorry, no. I'm sorry. Yeah, you yeah, know it's him. I'm yeah. sorry, uh, Ulrich. I have not had nearly enough alcohol for all of these jokes so far. Yeah, well, you know, if it's a tavern. But uh, why don't Lenore, anyway. Lenore lead the way, or Nick or one of us who's go with our scene. Is there room for us to go side by side? Just to get there? I want to. Well, Lenore. I want to keep an eye out and see if there's any kind of like traps or booby traps or anything like that around here. That's what I would do. Yes, you. All right, Lenora will head it up then. All right, are you? What are you doing as you approach this cavern? Uh, <laughs> just mostly uh, keeping an eye out. How steep does it look going like? into the cavern like does it look like steep enough that like if you lose your footing you just go straight down um while the snowpack is a bit sl uh, slick uh, the entrance does seem relatively level um okay uh it does seem very dark in there with poor lighting, and while you all do have dark vision, uh, I'm, it's not giving you a whole lot of great detail past the first kind of mm -hmm. glance in. Is there anyone that uh, perhaps has a uh, light source of some kind? I got a little bit. It ain't, it ain't much, but... Uh, and... Uh... Kabu will grab his, his uh, war hammer from his side and he'll basically make it light up like a candle. <laughs> it's uh, five feet of bright light and then five <laughs> feet out of dim light. Hey, well, also I can light a torch. Yeah, that works too. Yeah. I mean, it's flashy, but uh, sure. I'm sure a few <laughs> torches would not go unwanted. Just, you know. I'm sure we all have excellent dark vision. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And as such, what? you do not that? require a torch to see. However, if you are wanting a uh, heightened detail, I would recommend some sort of light. I'll light it up. Precisely. Uh, the detail can uh, sometimes matter quite a bit. Of course, you're right, Lenore. GM, I am letting my nose guide me. My trunk snakes out in front of me and just is sniffing the air. Well, and could you roll me a perception? With, that. with advantage, because I get advantage on smell natural plenty for a 29! <laughs> okay, despite the frigid wind blowing across the peaks here, you are going to roll uh, either a nature history check for me. <laughs> Why? <laughs> uh, seven. <laughs> You do smell creatures, perhaps the owners of these boot tracks, but you do not place the smell. You are not sure what creature they belong to. Can I tell where they are? The cavern. <laughs> like, is somewhere within the cavern or just yes. the cavern? In the Somewhere tunnel. within the cavern. Uh, well, the creatures that left these tracks are in the cavern. So, I uh, suggest we set up a marching order so that we don't get caught unawares. I believe it was Nick and Lenora leading the way. <laughs> All right. I assume Kabu and Chauncey in the middle. Yeah, I'll be right behind you guys. I'll go wherever I'm told you, sir. Even our two beat em up boys. Um, I'm, I hate the fact that I have called them that. Um, in the back. Beat em up boys. Don't you want me in the front though? Keep everyone safe. I think I can handle myself, but you know, if I cower in fear, you'll know what to do. <sighs> All right. Sitting in the back, telling dirty jokes. <clears throat> I've never had a problem with the rear. <laughs> I don't <fair. we'll> see. <laughs> you sure you're not drunk enough for that kind of jokes yet? 
Uh, I think I'm slowly warming up. Maybe it's the hypothermia. I can't tell. It's the the high altitudes. The alcohol affects you a little, lot better, a lot quicker. I don't think I ever got a dessert or a, a drink, Chauncey. Do right. do we finally find out the secret to why those lumpies are so popular? <laughs> <laughs> Just it's the cherries that have been sitting soaked. in the jar Yeah, for alcohol so soaked cherries in the lumpies. <laughs> the flammable fruits. Uh, okay, I am going to, as you uh, roll stealth for me, the two in front, if you are wanting. Of course. Can do. Any chance at stealth? I would love that. Sure. God okay. damn it, that's a bad roll. Are you out? sure? A 15. <laughs> a 15. Okay. <laughs> and a 14 from Nick. Uh, it's fine. Plus an 11, plus 13. How do Ooh, we do this? Do Why? I use my advantage from chat? <laughs> I'm just going to do something really quick. Fine. We're all going to die. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm saving the advantage. It's going to be a better use. Technically, I have a 16, Luca, if that helps at all. Okay. Uh, sorry, I was just rolling privately really quick. <laughs> um, okay, I am going to switch you over as you step into the cavern. Now... Let's see here. The walls of the cavern are made of thick sedimentary layers of limestone, marble, and shale. Water has frozen over the interior, giving the walls and floors a slick, glossy sheen. Sounds, large and small, seem to bounce off the cavern walls, echoing back and forth, and seeming to come from all directions, making it impossible to pinpoint where they originated. Penis, penis, penis. <laughs> uh, I guess. I guess. Kabu's going to do an investigation while we're in here just to see if there's any thing to avoid, any traps, anything like that. Unless mm -hmm. anybody else wants to do it better than I can. Um, I mean, yeah, just kind of a given throughout all of this, like, Lenore's eyes are just going to be everywhere just looking for tracks or traps or just any Same. of that. Um, I'm going to assume you guys' investigation is probably better than Kabu's. He only had his four. Don't... <laughs> No, yes, you're, I, you're I better would than love me. to investigate if that is allowed. Of course, go ahead. Boy. Can I assist? Ooh, I uh, yeah, that. do it with advantage, Lenore. I would love that. Ooh, hoo, hoo, 29. Okay. Um, ooh, you going to notice, uh, there's no traps here. However, you will notice that two sets of footprints are quite fresh compared to the others. There's only really one direction in this tunnel, I assume. Mm -hmm. Also, we have that table. We did. We have a bad table. We have a bad table. <laughs> very bad good. Bad table. Bad. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> hate it's not his fellow Harper. <laughs> Remember? We did this thing a whole bunch. <laughs> let's uh, let's eye out just around you. see what we I don't want there. anyone getting caught unawares. Yeah, I'd hate for something bad to happen right about now. <laughs> uh, <gasps> oh my god, we also got a deck. Oh shit. Oh dang. And so Purple, it begins. You madman. I love you. Night. And the this could go right. great or horribly, and I can't oh, wait to see which one it is. 
Yeah. Also, my cat yeah. Has woken up I think Turk has just decided that it's going to be the barber train at this point. It's just chaos, man. I missed all the bad tables and good tables and random chaos. Been a while. Been a while since we pulled from the deck. Oh no. Also, plus two to the GM. Oh my Tony god. Tony also loves chaos. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I need I'm to know scared. right now what color everyone is wearing. Uh, what color oh of God, armor, clothing, sure. whatever? What my if my character doesn't wear clothes? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's another deck. Oh. Oh my God. Hey, Mr. Saito, how you doing? Love you. Hey, uh, I am wearing blue. Uh, Kabu wears his uh, his uh, typical purple checkered, uh, purple fuzzy cape I or love that. coat. <laughs> um, like uh, uh, like our artwork when we're uh, wearing kind of like that green, uh, black cloak over. Uh, black with gold trim. Shorts is in a nice yellow waistcoat. Okay. We're all you wearing five. Five. Who's five? All right. That would be Auric. Hi. Ulrich. Yes. Mm, I love the chaos of Harpers. Um, <laughs> you have contracted the Shatner Plague. Whoa. <laughs> One overacts all actions and speaks stiltedly. You must adventure for the cure. Uh, and it's so fortunate that you are not wearing a red shirt right now. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all are mad. Okay, so that's a third card for Mr. What? Rogers. Yeah, what? Wow. Yeah. Every deck pulls, right Luca. Y'all I have not prepared deck, deck art. <laughs> okay, if we get three more, we'll just give one card to each player. <laughs> oh my god, no, don't tempt them. This is just. <laughs> These all bad. Proper X nail. Well, it, it, well, you see the uh, <laughs> the deck, deck of TPK things be. was you pretty test oh, Jesus. them. Oh, Good test and them. sorry, Turk. Keep bad. going. <laughs> I, there's a lot of wind up to this accent or way of speaking. Basically, the deck is sort of fifty fifty, good and bad, with a mix of just random chaos thrown in for a good measure. If Ulrich or... doesn't do like the the, the uh, double punch, like the double fisted punch at some point <laughs> in his fight, I'm, I'm gonna be sorely disappointed. I'm scared. The face Luca just made scared me. Well, the face Luca is making scares yep. me. Oh no! Mm. What have we done? She mm -hmm. rolled a one. There's you? some <gasps> thing. I did see a lot number. Um. So, let's see here. Okay. <laughs> hmm. All right. Let's see who this applies to. This first one. One. Lenore? Hopper. No, that is Nick. Oh. Uh -huh. Okay. Hey. Oh, character number one. What you meant? Card number one. Okay, so no, uh, yeah, the character. You're good. Mhm. Mm okay. Oh. I've got a card for you. Hold on, just a second. That I want to show. Fear. 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 Because I, I managed to find some art for it. So I just really want to do that. Um, and I'm going to roll the next one while I kind of work on that. Pretty art. Pretty art. Okay. And who's I'm also this going to apply to? It's like Windows 95. Four! Ego is the second one. I'm terrified. 
some of these cards don't even refer to like individual characters so yeah i i'm just rolling it beforehand just in case it does <laughs> the first card that will apply to nick is called juice god damn it <laughs> there's no escape from the juice pocket juice <laughs> never <laughs> <laughs> Why have you Every player me? rolls a d20. Nope. Oh, oh no, it's so this roll a d20, one. please. On a 1 through 10, their character heals 1d10 plus 10 hit points. If this would heal your character max XP, HP, the excess amount is added as temporary HP. On 11 through 20, your character loses 1d10 plus 10 hit points. If this would reduce your character's hit points to zero, your character falls unconscious but is stabilized. So that didn't apply to, to you specifically. Uh, Nick, so congratulations. It was just my good spirit just helped everyone feel a little bit better, except mm -hmm. for those that have crossed my path. Why do you All right, so I keep... rolled a one. Is that good? That's we, good. Okay. Uh, who offered the deck, the second card for the deck? Oh, uh, I believe the second was Saito. Saito, yeah. Saito, um, do you care if this card has been uh, pulled recently for Harper's already and would like me to roll again? Do you not care? It's totally up to you. I don't know. But what there was another, a third one, correct, from Mr. Rogers? Yep. Correct. I just lost 20 HP, guys. <laughs> Max damage. Wait, it's so fine. I, I rolled I a 19. 20. What did that mean again? <laughs> that means you take 1d10 plus 10 damage. Oh, okay. Cider don't care. All right. Fucking juice. So, what was it if Mr. you rolled low? Jurors, if you rolled low, it's one question D10 plus to you. Okay. Do you Ten care HP. if it's been recently pulled, most specifically, your special patron episode? Would you like a new one uh, that has not been recently pulled? Mr. Rogers. Uh, but for Mr. Seto and for Ego, I will not go through my death spiel. But you did get the card judgment. Ooh. Tell them about your characters. <laughs> you get a glimpse of the righteous scales <sighs> of judgment. I need you to tell the creatures standing before you to prove to them that you have lived a just life. This is literally my god. This this is like <laughs> the only thing you ever have happen to your characters. It it's amazing. So, Gruff so got glad. this, and who else okay. got this? Winchester got this, right? Uh huh. And then yep. uh, ego. Yep. <sighs> well, I I don't know if I have lived a moral or immoral life. I've done what I can to balance the scales of justice ever since I was born. I was raised um, to do just that, to uphold prophecy and to make sure that the strong are weakened and the weak are strengthened. This is about it. Uh, the scale will actually um, raise for just a second uh, before going down, and you will be proven worthy. So... Uh, for the next 1d4 days, you will be able to read and speak Celestial, will gain a flying speed equal to your walking speed, 
and will deal an additional 2d8 radiant damage with every attack. Wow. Well, damn. A flying elephant. I love that. <laughs> <Don't go! laughs> right after taking 20 damage. <laughs> yeah, so I'll just say it. It's the great equilibrium. They can't catch me if I'm flying. <laughs> Uh, what's the third one? Uh huh. Uh, I am. Uh, I need to figure out who's it applying to. Three. Oh. Oh, that's me. Oh. That is you. Uh, okay. I'm scared. It's fine. It's fine. It's I'm fine. I'm in danger. I'm in danger. <laughs> Lenore. Let's uh let's copy this in here for you. This is card <laughs> number 14. It's glass cannon. It's glass cannon. <laughs> oh no. Mhm. Mm um hold on just a second and I'll show it to you. <laughs> For the remainder of the session, the player character, the next player character to deal damage now inflicts an extra 3d6 damage, but since I've rolled, I think it should just apply to Lenore. Um, and counts enemy immunities as resistances, and resistances are nullified. However, that character now receives an extra 3d4 damage when attacked which cannot be reduced by any means. Their AC is reduced by two and they cannot benefit from save proficiencies. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, that last one's real rough. Yeah. It's, it's all pretty rough. <laughs> hey, let's have a nice fun cut out this everybody. Should be fine. It should be fine. Okay, so everyone, uh, everyone know what they're doing. Uh, uh, I heard some other notifications go off. Did we get anything else? No. Or are we good? Okay. There's a lot of um, mm -hmm. subscription stuff. Okay. I don't. Which, thank you to everyone who subscribes or gives sub gift subscriptions. We appreciate you dearly. Okay. I don't feel so. Well, immediately. Is everybody else... How is everybody doing? I feel fine. I, I think the drinks are finally kicking in. Yeah, sorry with me. Am I the only one that took damage? No, Lenore. <laughs> no, I, I also did. Um, I, something uh, feels strange now. Um, not sure if there's that, uh, some flap or something. I'm just imagining like Ego stubbing his toe like on the way in on like a rock and then just floating as he falls <laughs> just across the floor. Well, thank you, Saito. Kabu. <laughs> he gave me a good table. Oh, it's but for I... Lenore? All right. There's some thing wrong with this cabin. I swear to God, we're going to keep talking over Ulrich because we're going to think He's not, he's done talking. I'm <laughs> never done talking, ever. God. Ever, I Aus say. Australian. Australian? Uh, you're not Australian, which one are you? I've not been the Gaelic reasons at least, oh. There we go. Gaelic Shatner is not fun. Oh, I think he's real fun. <laughs> Rail, rail fun. It's rail fun. Rail fun. <laughs> now it's time for a hill build on. Um, Lenore, since uh, Sato is uh, granting this to you, I will let you know 
that you, <laughs> after your attacks, all of your attacks, you can choose to attempt to grapple and automatically succeed if you have a free hand. Or you can choose to shove your opponent if both hands uh, are free. Very cool. With automatic success on either of those options, but it just kind of depends which, how many hands you have free, which you can do. Okay. Very cool. Shall we continue? <laughs> Let's. Let's. <laughs> Um, let's see, Lenore, what is your, you have a terrible perception. Okay. <laughs> I do. No, I'm the really investigator. Do. Not mm -hmm. the perceiver. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's yeah. fine. Well, Kapu would have been, like, right next to her, because he was assisting, I think. Mm-hmm. With the investigation for traps. All right, I'm going to do another blind roll really quick. Or private role is what I mean. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So you are going to hear what sounds like echoes, though again, you cannot determine the point of origin of footsteps uh, that seem to be quickening. That is uh, not good. Um, do you want me to hear those, uh, those footsteps? We should find uh, cover quickly. Mm -hmm. Does it sound like it's... Does it seem dark in nature? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> that was bad. You know, this seems like a pretty spooky like place. You know, it's all dark and gloomy and inhospitable. Perhaps we're just looking for a nice sit down, a, you know, a hot cup or something and a chance to put their feet up. I bet they've been trodden around out there all day. They probably, probably just, we're, we're, you know, we're, we're, a bit miffed at the circumstance. Um, I mean, I just grab high. <laughs> <laughs> Wherever we think is probably best to take cover. All right, you don't really, I mean, other than this uh, kind of wall next to you, it seems like this cavern just continues to curve around to the left here. Uh, there doesn't seem to be much place to hide uh, in this tunnel. There All seems right, to be only one be... way forward. <laughs> okay, um, I guess just being on either side of the door is probably the best idea to do. Um... He's outside of the door, so that's not just a clean line of sight. No? Yeah. Are you sure I wouldn't just rather conjure up a nice feather mattress for them? I'm sure that'll put him in a right good mood. You need to draw your sword, Chauncey. Why would I have a sword, sir? What on earth do I need needing that for? Joe, do you got any kind of weapons on you? Or? All right, that's, that's um, good. Good lad, Johnsy. Keep a. Uh... Yeah. Oh, yeah, right. sir. Oh. Are we sure that they're coming this way and not running off to alert yeah. the main group? Can I do like a perception to see if I can hear them either running away or closer to? Mm, you can. Go ahead. Okay. Is, uh, is their stench getting stronger or weaker? That's a 15. That's a 15 for perception. Mm, with the with the cavern how it is and how sounds seem to bounce and echo around, you're unable to determine whether they're running towards you, running away, just echoing from somewhere in the cavern. Alright. I guess we can just kind of move forward is the only thing we can do. It's it's so. one one foot one uh, pair of feet running for now. Mm -hmm. uh, Kabu readies his shield and pulls out his hand crossbow. Okay. And he'll kind of take a step forward and kind of peek down. 
Does he see anyone in the immediate vicinity? Or He does not. All right. I think he's going to run over here. Try and, like, get as much cover as he can from the area that he sees. You do see light up ahead for just a second. And then it will go dim as if someone is dousing it. Uh, oh. Nick is going to... Sorry, Cobb, if you were going to do something. Oh, I just, I'll just signal to everyone that there's something up ahead. Um, Nick is going to kind of gather everyone kind of close to him real quick and um, say to them, I think we should blend in. And uh, he's going to cast Pass Without a Trace on the group. Um, which, as I'm sure you all already know, for the duration each creature you choose within a 30-foot radius has a 10, 10 bonus to X stealth checks. And can't yes, be tracked except by magical means. So, okay. extra sneaky. Okay. Everyone is moving forward then, undetecting? Undetectingly, yes. Let's do it. Yes, yes please. Yes. You want stealth checks or? Yeah, go ahead and give them to me. Though, uh,. Heck and proper and Nick, you can keep or proper and Kabu, you can keep yours if you want to, since you're kind of already stealthing and scouting out. Oh, okay. I actually hadn't rolled one yet, so that was Lenore. Oh, um, but now I have a thirty-seven. <laughs> like, please. <laughs> okay. I would love to re-roll that. That's a twenty-one for me. I didn't roll great. Ooh, hoo, hoo, thirty-seven. But. <laughs> Nineteen. Uh, twenty-eight. I forget to add your plus ten. So, oh yeah, you have. Yeah. Okay. You guys are able to head forward. Was anyone below a fifteen? I don't think any of us. I don't think so. Oh. Ego, were you? Oh no, you didn't add the ten. I did not do. We good. We gooch. Okay. Continue forward. How? Ah, what did I click? No, go away. Nick is staying close to the walls and trying to listen over um, use size. Okay. Roll a uh, perception for me. Most certainly will do. How's it 25? Very good. Uh, you are going to hear sounds of shuffling ahead. It's a kind of... It's a tense sound. Almost like the sound of someone trying to be quiet. Mm -hmm. But again, you're not sure how close, how far, as the sound kind of bounces and echoes around you. They are certainly waiting to be waiting to pounce on us as soon as we <laughs> enter the room. Yes. I would wonder. Hmm. Maybe they're just agitated. Uh, Ego will walk up a little bit and look down the hallway. Uh, and we'll reach his arm out, uh, and say a few words, <laughs> and we'll, uh, in a 20 radius sphere, cast Calm Emotions, uh, on, let me measure it out for you. everything within that and centered on the fire well yeah because you can't really see where they're hiding okay. so you see the fire which appears to have had something poured on it it's still lit slightly 
but it is smoking and smoldering as if recently snuffed out. Can you cast Calm Emotions centered on that? And can you read that off to me really quick? Uh, yes. Um, the need to make a charisma saving throw. Um, essentially, it's just if they're feeling a strong emotion, it's suppressed. You can make a target indifferent about creatures of your choice that it is hostile towards. So, obviously, I would be choosing to make them not hostile towards us. And what's the saving throw against? Charisma. No, what's 17. This? Okay. Okay. Well, uh, perhaps they'll be amenable now. Let's, uh, let's go see, shall we? Hey, if, if you if you think that worked, I'll, I'll we can give it a shot. Well, I'll still be careful. I don't know if it worked or not. Let's see what you do. Well, Rick, if we continue, we're gonna be uh, ambushed for sure. You're the strongest one here. Do you want to go first? Oh, I certainly can, if that's what's required. Hey, uh, take MP with you. I'll, uh, and then I'll have my uh, homunculus kind of land on your back, kind of like a backpack. All right, MP, let's get Trixie. This is um. so good, yet so so awful and i'm gonna go i mean up that's with... shatner just kind of summed up right there <laughs> i'm gonna go up with ulrich as well okay right as right as ulrich enters the kind of central chamber here ego is going to release a spell and cast uh, beacon of hope on everybody okay uh, as you enter into this cavern surrounding the smoldering fire, looking ready for action, except for one hobgoblin that seems just very relaxed. Uh, you will uh, see a few hobgoblins sitting around, uh, crouching, ready to leap into battle. And with them, you will see a fire giant with one eye. And I need everyone to roll initiative. All right. <laughs> I thought we were specifically promised there weren't going to be giants. I believe uh, frost giants were specified. Uh, uh, I, said, I said frost giants. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Ooh. There was, this in fact, fine. just mention of the frost giants so keep telling me there's no combat initiated there is oh, no combat sorry in just combat. a second hold on okay. <laughs> i thought it was me nope just the dm messing up how dare you this super complicated thing i had to get the music thing. going okay that is valid <laughs> music is more important to start first i think Oh, 100%. I spend too much time on epidemic sound. Of course it is. I And I specifically got these from there, so, you know, it's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. God, why am I first? Because no. you're a rogue. <laughs> Evidently. Okay. Uh, the hobgoblins are going to begin a kind of a, a battle cry and begin to move forward. And the giant will stand up, hair flaming behind her, and ready her weapons. Go ahead, Nick. Okay, uh, I guess Nick's gonna come in here now that we're, I guess we're fighting now. Uh, 
take aim for uh, I guess this guy one of these guys over here and um, fire a crossbow over over Kabu's shoulder um, for a 14 a 14 to mm -hmm. hit this guy the very chill looking person over here it will not hit probably good because I probably shouldn't hit the chill one <laughs> but uh, Nick's gonna take a step back and uh, end his turn there okay okay um so do I see which one seems like the chillest of the bunch yeah they've got a little symbol above their head that looks kind of like the stunned symbol where it's just oh, like okay. loopy circles I see uh, do I see this guy here? I guess Fog of yeah, War. Yeah, if, I guess you, I can. if okay. you can see him, you can see him. All right, cool. Uh, just to prevent any kind of possible flank, I am going to go ahead and take aim at that one. Uh, that's right, I got inventory. Okay. All right, you, you hit it once, and then you hit. You have to go to the chat bar and click attack, and then you can do it twice there. My mistake. Okay. <laughs> okay. Does a 13 hit it? No. All right, so he'll quickly shoot off another one. Does a 15 hit it? <laughs> 15 does not hit it. Oy, all and right. with a second look, you will uh, notice that these hobgoblins are wearing... Pretty nice armor. Crap. That's pretty nice. I've seen nicer. <laughs> is that it for you, Kavu? That is, oh yeah, I forgot I've got an end turn button, don't I? Somewhere. I thought I did. Yeah, that's my turn. Okay. Uh, this guy going to move up to Ulrich and attack. All right. A 17 to hit? Nope. Okay. Locked. Okay. Uh, that is it for his turn. Um, and we will go on to the next guy. This guy is actually going to back up. To there. Okay. This guy is going to shoot with his longbow at you, Ulrich. Very popular today. Mm -hmm. No. Oof! A five. <laughs> Slice Oof. that one out of the air. <laughs> okay. Um, and then this dude is going to come up to here. And also attempt a 21 to hit. That will hit. Okay, then he is going to use his martial advantage to deal an extra 7 damage to you since he's got his buddy standing next to you. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be an 8 plus 7. Okay, and that's a 15. Well, that stinks, but I still have 29 temporary HP between me and that, so... Okay. I'll take that. And then, it's this lady's turn, and she is going to pick up, just reach down and pick up a big, huge boulder off of the floor, and throw it at you. Okay. I'm very popular. 
Ooh, a 15 to hit though. Duck. It's gonna just land with a smash at your feet. Uh, spraying up some loose bit of rock, but you are not hit. It's Kobayashi for you. <laughs> oh my god. Ego, you are up. Uh, Ego. That's my sound, by the way. You're good. Good? Okay, just making sure you guys can hear me. Uh, Ego is going to make sure he's in the middle of all of his party members having cast uh, Beacon of Hope. Let me let you guys know exactly what to rem remember there. Advantage um, on saving throws and death saves and get max healing. Yep, advantage on wisdom saving throws and wisdom death saves. Save. Yep. Um, and Ego is going to um, kind of rub his hands together and uh, a uh, his spiritual weapon, which is a uh, spear, is going to apparate next to the uh, next to the giant, uh, and we'll go ahead and make it with that. It's a twenty-six to hit. Okay, uh, that will hit for nine force damage. Nine force damage. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, and then that was his bonus action for his action. Uh, he's still been holding uh, the pot of Earl Grey tea in his trunk. Um, and he is going to take a moment to lift the top off of it and inhale it uh, in a deep inhale, uh, and he will use one of his channel divinities to enter a prophetic trance. The roll 2d20. Okay. Uh, and then that will be Ego's turn. Okay. You also get eight temporary hit points from my chef feet. You've consumed Excuse the food me. that I've made since my last long rest. <laughs> You said eight? Eight temporary hit points to you, sir. I love oh, it yeah. so much. It's so good. I found a use for it. You weren't just serving food to everyone in the war room? Oh, no right, asked me, sir. Your turn. I can only take orders. Right. I'm going to take a swing at this guy who's right next to me. 26 to hit. Uh, that will hit. Fantastic. He takes 13 damage, and I got another one clocking his way. For a 23 to hit. That will hit. That's another 9 on top I'm of that. I'm sorry. The the 13 damage he is going to drop. Oh, in that case. I'll have words with this guy over here who had such a goal to choose me for 23 for 9. Okay. Um, and uh, in that case... Because his buddies are taking advantage of him being up in my space, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna shove him. Okay. So he has to make an athletics check against me. Okay. And he's free to try and beat a thirteen. No. Oh. He is about five feet away. <laughs> okay. Uh, knock him back with the shield after just running up and Superman punching my long sword into his side. Uh, but that is gonna be my turn. Amazing. Okay. Oh. Very good. Well, cool. Okay, so this guy right here is dropped. Correct? Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Uh, and I've changed it so you can now hover over them and see their health bar. Oh, lit. That's. That's so cool. Thank nice. you, Foundry. Um, cool. Uh, I... I also appreciate that the dead one is red in the uh, round tracker. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, okay. I am She's going to... Oh. Ooh, I don't know. Um... Thanks for pointing out the round tracker. I did not know that existed. Oh! Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> Up to here. 
<laughs> all she can see is that guy and Ulrich. So right now, um, she's gonna yell out uh, at Ulrich and just be like, "Oh, he's not even there! Dang it! Okay, hopefully he trusts me because I'm gonna cast him large on him, uh, <laughs> and we're gonna make him big." Uh, okay. And hopefully he's to okay what? With to that. what size? Um, I believe it is too large. Um, yeah. yeah, it's one size category, so uh, medium to large. Okay. So, yeah, You're in big um, until spell ends, uh, he has advantage on strength checks and strength saves, and his weapons also do a D4 extra damage. Um, yeah, so that's her action. Then she's going to bonus action cunning action to kind of like be against the wall and just hide for now i guess okay all right and then it is this guy's turn who's just very chill um he's not worried about attacking you is that correct uh he does not see this as hostile okay um does that change upon seeing one of his buddies go down? It does not. Only if we hit him? Uh, yes. Only if he is hit. Let me, let me make sure on that one. Um. Oh, no. If he sees a, another of his allies get hit, he is hostile. Okay, that's what I thought. Yep. Um, okay, so he is definitely gonna shoot... An echo at uh, Ulrich. <laughs> and giant bull. <laughs> 21 to hit? Uh, has my AC been affected by gigantism? No, it has not. All right, then that's it. You made him a bigger right. target, no. <laughs> it doesn't affect AC, at least for the spell. <laughs> Um, but he is, let's see, he is going to use uh, his martial advantage to add seven onto that attack a, since you're standing a, next to his buddy. I knocked his buddy five feet away. This, oh, his that guy's dead. Never mind. Just four yeah. damage then. Exactly. Let me go and just remove him from the board so I don't Perfect. continue to... They have not gotten through my temporary health yet. Thank you, Juice. <laughs> okay. I'm clearly on the juice. Look how big I am. Oak's oh, been juiced, and I can tell. Mm. Nick, you are up. Nick's gonna do the same thing he did last time. Um, now that he's hostile against us, I'm gonna attack this guy with a, uh, a 26. Okay. That will hit. Excellent. Seven piercing damage to this bad boy. Okay. Ouch. Oh. I'm confused. Hmm? They have very low health. Uh, which one did you attack? This one. Uh. They are half problems. Yeah. Um, can I ask something real quick? They've got really I nice armor, but. Um, uh huh. They have really nice armor. Do they look like they're already like near death, or it, do they just look like they're ready? They for just fight? look like hobgoblins, which is basically just goblins, but you know, trained Hobbier. taller, <laughs> trained yes. martially, like they're army goblins. They're a little bit more intelligence and strategically minded. Ooh. They're a cousin of the. Is there a goblin. red shirt? God made goblins. Oh, God more made like goblins, goblins are the red shirts. That's, Hobgoblins okay. are the officers, if we're right. making that analogy. Uh, Kabu shoots, uh, shoots this guy for 26. Or <laughs> yeah, hit, that'll and then hit. it's 8 damage. Alright, he's down. And then he immediately takes aim at this guy over here. Okay. Okay. I keep saying reload. Why am I reloading? Oh, reload application. Alright, let's keep going. Uh, 27 to hit. Uh, that'll hit. Nine damage to him. All right. Ouch. Uh, still up. He is still up. Sh shoot him again with okay. the bonus action. 
17 to hit? Uh, that will not hit. Uh... Uh, okay, yeah, I can't use Flash of Genius for that. Okay. All right. Uh, then that's me. Okay. It is this guy's turn. Sorry, it's having me reload the application real quick. Okay, and he is just running. Okay. Um, it is now Chauncey's turn. You guys, I don't think you can see him. Gotcha. Okay then, let's uh, let's try a bit, a bit more uh, hospitable about these things, eh? And he's gonna drop a lovely, lovely sleep, sleepums for everyone, right here. Lovely 20, 20 foot sphere of super chill sleepy times. <laughs> super. What chill. do I need to roll? Um, you don't. Sleep effect hits. I roll. roll. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I roll hit points, starting with the weakest, they fall asleep until all the points are used. Okay. What's the total that I have to spread out? Did that roll? No. Perfect. Um... It is how many D8? 5 D8 plus uh, 5 D8 plus 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 D8. Oh, 15 D8. Oh, you need, need to roll. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. You cast it at a fifth level? Yep. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Fifth level sleep. Holy shit. Boom. Remind me never to order sleepy time tea from you. I know, right? Just I think face everyone down just on nice desk. Just down. <laughs> there we go. The sleepy time is not optional. Oh, I need sunglasses. Okay. Don't you have to, you have to roll the D8? Oh, I thought Luke was doing it. Yeah, My bad. It's, it's being oh, weird. I was letting you do it. But if you want me to do it, I can click on the thing <laughs> yeah, sure. and do it. Yeah, sure. like two big pistols of dice. Go for it. Okay. 15 to you. That's it. So many on the table. Oh, 15 to you? 15, yeah. yeah 15 to you. <laughs> there we go. 63. Uh, okay, so, so this, this little dude is absolutely asleep uh he's gone sleepy time then this one and then it's uh, no, it's, in 20 foot radius. it's it's just these yeah. two over here yeah so it's the yeah. hobgoblin the giant uh however this guy is still awake what does it do if he... nothing it just nothing. doesn't okay. affect him yeah big nothing. big giant lady is um still awake but little dude next to her just conks out right on the floor Bonk. There we go. Don't need to go fight a new one. Okay. He's sleeping. There's no turn for him. Uh, does he roll a save at all, or does this just last for a certain amount of time? Mm. I think it lasts for one minute. Until the spell ends, the sleeper takes damage, or someone uses an action to sh shake him or slap him. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um... The giant turns to smack him awake, it'll kill him. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> okay, so. Alright, uh, this guy is going to. It's fine, my neighbors upstairs are just trying to come down through the ceiling, I think. Um, okay, so. I am going to what? 
need to roll a decision. Okay, he's just gonna shoot you. Uh, Ulrich. That's fair. He's allowed to. He's Actually, allowed you to know cry. what? He's gonna shoot Chauncey. <gasps> no. A twenty-one to hit. <laughs> because he. Boy. Wait, wait. Can I? Can I ask? Like, yes, mechanically. He is not within five feet of me, but because I'm five feet in the way of the trajectory of this arrow, could I wording uh, maneuver this attack? No. You gotta be next to the buddy. All right, so five damage piercing Chauncey. Ouch. Not um, my boy. How Ouch. My hairy little feet. This whole party will die for Chauncey. <laughs> well, the other guys will die. We'll live. Um, let's see. Okay. Uh, yeah. No, uh, you you did a strange little cast, and there, buddy, just dropped. Um, they're not a huge fan of that. Uh, the hobgoblin is going to yell out an order or what sounds like an order to the giant um and she will walk forward chauncey hello oh. all right there and miss she is going to swing at you twice oh, oh. would you mind not oh a 30 to hit uh it will graze me i <laughs> 24 slashing damage. Perfect. And are you still up? I'm grand. Okay, I'm a very, I've got a very hearty swing, tummy. She will swing again. For a 29 to hit. Oh, uh, And let me 26 check. slashing damage. Oh, only 26. Oh, that's grand. Perfect. As the... As the second attack hits, Chauncey gets knocked back into Ego, and Ego just, don't worry, bud. It's all right. And lifts him back up, uh, and is, Ego's going to use his um, one of his abilities, uh, Visions of Danger, yeah, um, to use a reaction to cast a spell on Chauncey. And that spell is going to be, um, let's do with, oh god, he's taking a lot of damage, hasn't he? Yeah. Um, let's do a fourth, fourth level cure wounds. Uh, so, so Chauncey, you regain 42 hit points. Whoa. Hanging around all over the place. Beacon of hope. We say that's the nicest tummy rub I've ever had, so I feel much better for that. Um, and geez, okay. Uh, the spiritual weapon is going to whip around and fly and try to hit the uh, the thing in the head again. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. The attack is this. Oh, that's not going to do it. Uh, I'm going to use one of my uh, prophetic rolls to change that 5 to a 14. Does a 23 hit, Luca? Yes. Okay. Um, and that's going to be 10 force damage. Okay. Uh, that is my bonus action. Oh, my God. Uh, okay. Oh, hold on one second. Um... Also, that healing roll, was that with Beacon of Hope or not? That was with Beacon of Hope. Um, and then... Uh, God, that's a lot of damage this person's doing. Um, we're going to send out first level Guiding Bolt at it as well. Okay. Is that a main uh, action, or...? It is, yeah. What was your heal? The heal was a reaction. Okay, it wasn't awesome. on my turn. Yeah. Um, Guiding Bolt, 26 to hit. 
That'll hit. Oh, only for 13 radiant damage. Oh, wait a minute. What does it say? Hold Are on. you adding? I'm not adding my uh, my deck stuff. What is that? 2d8? 2d6? Well, add it on this attack because we don't retcon. If you yeah, forget, you forget. Yeah, I know. What's the, uh, what's the number, though? Was it bonus damage or? Yeah, it was. It was part of judgment. There it is. Um, you you should be able to search the yeah, journal two, for judgment. Yeah, two d eight radiant damage. Uh, okay, roll so it up. Add okay. another. So it's thirteen plus eight, so twenty one total. I already added the guiding bolt, so. Yeah. So uh, another eight. Okay. Radio. Okay. And that's the turn. Ulrich. Hey, uh, well, this one's pretty easy. Uh, Ulrich's gonna see this person uh, laying into Chauncey. He's gonna rush over. And, Not my chef, you bitch! <laughs> uh. <laughs> and, uh going to strike out with moon pedal. Okay. Ooh. Okay. I'm going to use okay. my inspiration. Nine. Yep. 18 to hit. Ooh. Meets a beats it. You got it. Perfection. Uh, that's going to be 13 damage. I'm going to use my bonus action right now to uh, shield master shove her away. Did so you athletics. Add a D4 for being enlarged. Oh, I didn't add D4. That's a good point. Yeah, and it, it will be a D4, yes. Uh, you... Oh! Ooh, okay, so that's going to be 19 damage then. Uh, and athletics is going to be a 16 against her 15. So she's going to be pushed five feet uh, away, right back there, I guess, relative. Uh, finished my move by stepping in front and swinging a second time with Moon Petal. Um, 29 to hit. Okay, that'll hit. For seven, uh, slash R1. Four, uh, so nine total. Uh, I'm also gonna place uh, a warding, uh, an unwavering mark on her, which I will put up there now. Um, basically, he's just gonna square up and uh, mark her as his target. Okay. So, and that's gonna be my turn. Okay. It me. Okay. Um, I just needed someone to be within five feet of this so I can get sneak attack damage. Uh, we're gonna take some short bow shots. Uh, hey, hey. Uh, first one, you know what? I'm gonna use my advantage from chat. Are you moving up behind Chauncey then, or? Um, I can. Or who are you shooting at? Um, the giant that I can see from this angle. Okay. Uh, I do need to move. That's that's uh, that's fifty three damage. <laughs> As a crit. <laughs> Rogues. Holy shit. That's not shit. even adding the glass cannon damage. Yet. <laughs> oh. All right. Tell me the tell me the glass cannon damage. Uh. Which is okay. also which is also that doubled. That is three d six. So let me roll that. Doubled. Um, so nine doubles would be 18 more. So Ouch. that is why we save advantage with rogues. <laughs> um, okay. Um, second short bow strike. Let's see what this do. Um, what do the brew? Um, okay. So that is a Eleven. We're not doing sneak attack this time. I don't think that is a one per round thing. So it is yeah. just the eleven this time. Oh okay. wait, no, that's to hit. So never mind. That doesn't hit. Oh, um, okay. I, can I was gonna read. say like, isn't I that can't just... read? Okay. <laughs> ah. Um. 
Okay. So that one misses. Uh, third and final thing. Uh, I'm gonna try this again. again. See if it worked. What it do? Fourteen is not hit. No, Probably. it does not. But look at all uh, that possible damage. <laughs> <laughs> so it's fine. So many dice. One very large hit. <laughs> then she misses. Um, and yeah, she's just, just gonna be kind of taken aback about what she just did, and just kind of be ready. Um, yeah, that is it. Okay, let me uh, nix it to where. Oh, we're on Nick. Okay. You enjoyed that, Rogue. How about another? Do it up. <laughs> How is a 22 for our fire giant? Uh, a 22 will hit. Lovely. How's 27 piercing damage then? Hey, Nick. Hey, me. How do you want to describe that? Oh, God. How do I want to describe this? Um... <laughs> I think it's clean simple. Just straight into a non-armored part of their their body and a big thump into the snow. <laughs> okay. Can she land puddle. on the sleeping one? <laughs> <laughs> yes, she definitely can. <laughs> Alright, and I'm gonna I'm gonna remove her from the board just so I don't get confused. Uh she is down. I like to imagine the snow is sort of melting all around her. Absolutely. There's just like a puddle just... of melted ice and snow forming under her as her the flames of her hair slowly goes out. Um, and now, Nick, is there anything else you want to do with your turn? No, I don't think I can. So that'll go on to whoever's next. Okay. Whoever's still awake or willing right. to fight, I guess. Yeah, Kabu will go here next to the fireplace and he'll try to shoot at the one that's still awake. Mm-hmm. Uh, does a 16 hit? Oof, nope. All right, let's try it again. That's a natural one. Let's try it again. <laughs> and for the third attack, 21. Oh, hey! Yes. <laughs> All right. And that is six damage. Okay. Is that the end of your turn, or is there anything else you would like to do? That is going to be the end of my turn, because my third attack is a bonus, so. Okay. Uh, it is this guy's turn, and he is... Okay. And then, and I am just going to... And then Chauncey, you are up. Um, Chauncey is gonna have a little, a little wonder now that everyone's, you know, done done their bits, and he is going to, uh, he's gonna use his, yeah, I think so, I think so. Why not? Um, so he uses performance of creation for Bing to uh, use his his bardic magic, his hospitality magic, everything he knows uh, to to make this sleepy chap a bit more comfortable. And he's going to conjure up uh, a little sleeping bag and just just tuck him in, tuck him into his little sleeping bag. Okay. <laughs> Important stuff in a, in a, a fight. Uh, that dude is continuing to sleep. This dude is going to fire an arrow at Kabu. Let me know if it hits you, Kabu. 13. Nope. That better not hit you, Kabu. All right. Upon <laughs> that Kabu, uh, missing, like, he is you. going to back up. 
um, and begin to retreat. And then it is now Ego's turn. Are we, are we pursuing? Probably Shh. should if there's extra. <laughs> All right. Well, able to he gets them. up, I'll squish him. How about that? Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Can I? How come I can't see? Uh, right click and click the little fire on your uh, token. Oh, okay, so I can't see, uh, I can't see him. Uh, so I guess, uh, uh he'll just use, uh, bonus, uh, he'll use his action to dash. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Oh, hello. <laughs> Hello there. Uh, bonus action. I don't know if I can do anything. Um, yeah, uh, I'll just move my spiritual weapon uh, 20 feet towards me, but it's not like it's going to catch up anytime soon. Okay, Ulrich. Uh, Ulrich's going to drop Moon Petal on the ground real quick and take out a crossbow that is now proportional to his size. Um, and he's going to try and ping a few shots at this guy. Question, uh, logistically, there is a Loxodon standing <laughs> in the tunnel in front of this much smaller hobgoblin. I figured I was firing from such an angle that I could. What size class is a Loxodon large? It's considered medium. Okay. <laughs> uh, roll with disadvantage then, because it's, you've got this dude standing in a tunnel. Uh, that's still an 18 to hit. Okay, that'll hit. All right. That's going to be 11, and does it, the D4 doesn't apply to that ranged will... attacks. Drop him. How would you like to describe it? Just like drops the the sword down to the side. He is just going to pull a uh, have a uh, bolt set in his mat, like an increased size. Everything's gotten big, and just and just over the top of Ego's head. This is just going to dome the back of this hobgoblin's head and stick him into the ground as if he had been staked through the back of the mouth. Okay. For the increased size affecting things. All right, effectively, you guys are out of combat, but before we deal with our sleeping friend or move forward or at all, I suggest we take a break. <laughs> Yes. Seems good. Okay. All right. We will be right back and then we will deal with our sleepy friend uh, and continue on. Uh, take five, everyone. Welcome back. Um, we just removed or scattered those hobgoblins and we defeated the fire giant that was here. You have a sleeping hobgoblin on the floor that has been tucked in uh, to a little sleeping bag by Chauncey. And while uh, have those, uh, having had those last hobgoblins go down, the fire giant go down, you all are circling around this sleeping hobgoblin uh, as behind you, Ego continues to walk uh, down the hallway um, or this tunnel here and he will fade from your guys' view. Uh, I think Kabu would want to go after so that we're not splitting the party in a very bad ratio. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, if, you're, if, if he sees Kabu going on, yeah. Well, well, let, let's, well, let's all go together then. We're all just going to go rushing off. I mean, don't get me wrong. I want to go back. It looks like there's some stuff back there by the uh, by uh, sleepyhead over there. All right. So let's just let him nap and then we can go grab the stuff and go. He's Kabu, a 20 anymore. hits? 
Hits me? Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. Uh, ignoring Ulrich, you walk off after Ego um, and also disappear from view. Uh, can, so we do, can we do anything? We're going to deal with that in a second as these remaining uh, party members are still here. <laughs> well, I, I, I make it known that I'm going after Ego before I disappear. Well, there yes. goes my idea of sticking together. Well, the rest of us are still together. Is that right? Also, that am I going to fit in that tunnel? Probably not. Um... Oh, uh, dear. It, it's a fade very soon, um, and probably as we're talking about it, you <laughs> turn back down the sides because it only lasts a minute. I like grab a hold of the <sighs> giant sword and it shrinks back down the sides with me. Oh, well, that's good. Well, uh, Luca, the game is. I've just unpaused it. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> um, as you shrink back down to size, uh, Nick is going to notice the. Uh, chests in the corner here mm -hmm. were they uh protecting those you think or are they giants yeah probably well uh we can take them on the way out or we can slide them out to a better spot to grab on the way out or we can look through them right now if you don't really mind leaving those two out to dry i don't Which... mind that um is there any ways that we can obscure these uh, very quickly? And... I have a good idea. How about we kill all the guards so there's no one here to look after them? Oh, wait, we already did that one. Real quickly, while Ulrich is being sassy and not talking like Shatner anymore. <gasps> I forgot. <gasps> I... <laughs> um, Nick is going to take a quick look over them and double check there's no traps or triggers or anything around them. Do an investigation for me. I would love to. Maybe there's some Might kind only of only gotta be a cure in there. It's only a nine. Or maybe you don't notice any sort of traps on the chest? And upon opening them, you will find 10,650 copper pieces, 6,000 oh. silver pieces, 1,100 gold pieces, 205 platinum pieces, and in addition, there are 10 gems, each worth 100 gold pieces each. There is an elixir of health, horseshoes of speed, a brightly colored suit of splint mail and a small folded up crumpled piece of paper. Next then I kind of dig through and find a little crumpled uh, piece of paper. Yes. This appears to include a map of the nearby region, as well as complex notes and scribblings detailing settlements, cities, and camps of orcs, hobgoblins, humans, and other creatures. The paper and ink seem to be of a very high quality. It's a little crude, but I'm sure the information is important. I mean, I guess we can come back for the riches, but... Nick is going to tuck this into a, a satchel or something. Okay. You will tuck this away. Um, intent on kind of deciphering it uh, later, later. Once yep. you're back safely somewhere. <laughs> he also will grab a few of the gems just, just in case he doesn't get a chance to come back this way. Mm -hmm. But he's not going to like start hefting it out. Okay. Ego and Ikash, while they are doing this, you guys walk down this tunnel and you feel something reach out and wind itself around your middle and hoist you up towards the ceiling. 
And as you look up, you will see a gaping maw ringed with teeth. And I one glowing <laughs> eye. Um, as it has, it's got its tendrils around you and is bringing you towards its mouth. Yeah, Ego will reach out his hand uh, and a bright flash of light will emanate. And I need you to make a charisma saving throw. Okay. Thirteen? Uh, that thing is no more, and as it wraps around me, it is banished to a different realm. I back out of the cave and stumble into, e into Kabu as he's walking and go, probably not this way just yet, Kabu, and uh, we'll, we'll walk back towards the It had both of you, so go ahead and roll 3d6 for fall damage. For both of us? Mm-hmm. Should I just one of us roll, or? Up to you. I got it. All right. Uh, ten. Okay. All right. Luckily, I still had that bonus HP, so. Yeah, uh, maybe we shouldn't be splitting up. That's what I came here to get you for. <laughs> of course, of course. Oh, and you... Let, let's just get back real quick. Come on. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> do, do, do. <laughs> and do we see them going over the treasure? Uh, yes. And there is quite a bit, and I have pasted it in the chat here for you. Oh, okay. Hey, if you guys want, I can take care of that for us. Hey. Good. And Dot he'll, uh, he'll whistle over to Kit, his uh, rolling uh, silver and gold chest. And uh, he'll say, hey, Kit, uh, why don't you grab this stuff for us? And it'll open up its mouth because it's a mimic. And a golden tongue will reach out, grab the chest, and just empty it into its maw, into its bag of holding that I have secured in them within Kit. <laughs> so good. This is that good, good Discworld shit that I've really been craving. It says Steel Defender can look like anything as long as the stats aren't changed. So the only thing I had to do was put wheels on it. So I made it wheeled luggage with a extending handle. <laughs> Chat is oh, saying- Oh, Luca, uh, you're, you're muted. muted. <laughs> no, you're not. Maybe oh, hey, oh I was on, on Streamlabs. On the stream. God damn it. Oh That's no. Okay. Yeah, so like it was the... only, it, no, it was only just for a little bit because I had to cough. So yeah. Slow. they, they then, missed me no. uh, exclaiming about the luggage. Yeah. <laughs> now this that begs the question, does Turk have to speak like Shatner or does Ulrich have to speak like Shatner? I am <laughs> always in character. <laughs> yeah, so all the coins and gems and everything just get like dropped down to Kit's mouth. And he just kind of tosses aside the other chests. Okay. Good Very news good. and bad news, everyone. Bad news first, as always. There is a disgusting creature in the cave system ahead. Uh, good news is I banished it. And with any luck, it is not from this prime material realm, and it will not return. More good uh, news, we've learned not to split the group. But what if it does? Well, then... It won't surprise us. Yes. We can all face it together. We, right? know it is, we know it is there. Right. So we will just wait around? Oh, no. We should probably move quickly. I can only hold this for a minute. Right. But if we're leaving and carrying injured... I don't, I don't understand what you're saying. Who's injured? If there's something else that's nasty in there, in the cave, and we fight it and win and have to lug someone out and are hurt, we're just gonna leave this thing here to ambush us again. Oh, I see. I see what you were saying. Well, let's go see if it came back or not. If it isn't, then we know we got lucky. 
If it is, we take it out. Because we're going to have to take it out anyways. Exactly. Yeah, it seems logical, don't it? <laughs> well, Extremely. I can show you exactly where I... Mr. Cobble. <laughs> I, I can show you where it was banished from. I'll prepare your... Your, your weapons, uh, magic, uh, for when I release this, or when the spell ends. If it comes back, then we can hopefully dispatch it very quickly. All right. I, sounds hey, like a plan. What, what are we going to do with the uh, uh, buddy here in the uh, sleeping bag? Well, Who, he... even though he seems quite comfortable, is beginning to stir. Shh. Right, so we could kill him now, or let him be. Hope he runs away. Or use him as a way to figure out if this thing's coming back. Uh, uh, or we could knock him up. out. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm or a goblin, perhaps. I speak goblin. I was asking perhaps simply, <laughs> yeah, so I'm glad that you I am up. Me. And get on with our day. Let's do that. And I'll get out a rope and I'll head over to start tying him up unless anyone protests. No. I'm sure Oliver will tie it extra tight. He always does. He knows Wait. his way around. Just some weird knots on the ankles and, you know, it all kind of like comes together like a ham or turkey. It turns out that Ulrich is the, fruit, the true chef. About to get out some oils, but he hides. Knows how to trust a hobgoblin. <laughs> and we open them. I'm oh, sorry, we're not killed off this show. So <laughs> beings first, of buddy. unimaginable grotesqueness await us. Let's move. Gotta move on. Uh, but real Please. quick, Nick is going to uh, wave one of the gems in front of Kit, like a, a dog in a ball, and say, <laughs> "Go long." As soon as she tosses it, just a gigantic tongue reaches out and grabs it. <laughs> hey, uh, Kit's meant to, to stop things from hitting me, so he's pretty... Uh, despite the fact that he has neither hands nor eyes, his hand eye coordination is awesome. They go to one Kit and I'll slap it on the back. <laughs> before venturing down the Tunnel of Doom. All right. I love um, you. Ulrich's Shibari done. You guys continue on down the tunnel. Uh, to where... Google it. <laughs> we do perception do check for to? it? Or don't. Yes. Um, uh, to where Ego saw or banished this creature. Ego, uh, how long does that last again? Uh, I, I hope for a minute. Okay, we'll say that minute has passed. And at the end of that minute, there is either banished to its home plane or it returns mm -hmm. and i'm gonna do a perception natural 20 to see if i can find it Ooh. uh you only see see a multitude of stalag tights hanging from the ceiling any of them conjure up a, a fear from my darkest nightmares <laughs> All of them instill in you a fear. And will you please roll either a nature or history check for me if you would like to try and figure out what it was? Nature or history, they're the same, so I'll say nature, sure. Uh, natural 19, 23. You would guess that that was a roper. And you know that no matter how high your perception, if it wants to appear as a stalactite, it will appear as a stalactite. If it is not moving. We're playing Roper Roulette and I hate it. So, so uh, good news, bad news, folks. <laughs> bad news is this thing can still be here as one of the stalactites and we wouldn't be able to tell until it wants us to. And uh, good news, I lied about the good news. There's no good news. <laughs> Oh, but... Yeah, absolutely should be light of foot, so it does not notice us if there are more. You would also know that it is from the material plane, 
though it frequents the Underdark because of all of its beautiful cave systems. Uh, my guess is that uh, it's, it likely is not going to uh, let us pass. It probably has some sort of blind, if not extreme good, extreme um, superior sight in the dark. Um, I doubt we'll be able to sneak past it. Can I see that is what I got? <laughs> Great. <laughs> Can we uh, push the hobgoblin down ahead of us? Or is that too cruel? Let's just push on. If, things think, if this thing wants to mess with us, I'll give it a taste of the iron. All right. Okay. Or rather, the iron and, and silver. You guys are pressing on. Uh, who wants to lead? Actually, I, I've... question. Um, how, uh, about how long is this hallway? That like all the stalactites and stalagmites are down. So each square on here is ten feet. Okay. It's quite a long ways. Uh, like sixty feet. Okay. So about until you see it kind of bend away and continue on forward. Okay. Um. So. About halfway down the uh, the hallway, um, Lenore is going to take out a bit of fleece and just kind of whisper into it and then blow on it so it floats down to about 30 feet and cast a silent image of Ego just kind of like just stomping around. <laughs> Seeing if uh, she can provoke any of these things if they're there. Okay. Uh, how far is she sending it? Um, uh, that's sixty feet. Or not the range is sixty feet, about thirty feet down. And it's a fifteen foot cube, so if that. Okay, you guys matters. are going to see. A huge, what looks almost like crossbow bolt, come down from the tunnel that this turns down and goes as if to impale this fake loxodon and just into the rock by like a foot. Uh, Ulrich, you would guess that this was shot by a ballista. They got a fucking siege engine. They got a goddamn siege engine somewhere down there. I'm calling dibs. Hey, well, you'll have to race me for it then. That is why we are careful. Um... So we have the ceiling to be wary of, as well as. Well, we can move quickly because it's going to take up a second to load that thing again. We should. And Move. you hear sounds wow. echoing throughout, bouncing back and forth. All right, Cobb was just going to make like it. What sounds like cranking. Cobb was just running for it. We we're need, gonna, need to engage. Okay. Cobb was running. He's, gonna, he's, he's running over the, here. Yeah. You're going <laughs> to run into this little alcove yep. at the end here. <laughs> and you continue to hear cranking and grunting and shouts uh, go, bouncing go, go. all around you. Can I move up to here? Yes. In fact, up to your left, you are going to see a little uh, alcove that's kind of up and ahead. However, right now, as you step right there, I need you to make a deck save for me. Oh, okay. That's <laughs> actually okay. Um, saving throw, normal. Uh, Traps. But you use my plus two for 14. Oh, not quite good enough. You are going to fall prone and Actually, slide 
actually, uh, Kabu's going to go ahead and do a flash of genius. Add four to that. Oh. 18. Okay. Wait, 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 watch out, watch out. Your feet are immediately genius. going to start slipping out from under you as you realize that the, the gloss and sheen here of the ice is actually quite deceptive and you are at the start of what appears to be a very steep icy ramp down to what looks like a bridge over a possible abyss. Heralding Kabu's advice, he'll plant a sword down in to uh, stop himself and like dig his heels in. Um, the cranking has stopped. And he's just gonna kind of like look in the sound, the direction of the sound. I need you to roll another deck save. <laughs> Shite. <laughs> right. does, it look, does it look like it's a trap that's there, or is it just the way the area is? It looks like you are staring down a very long, straight tunnel that ends over a large abyss with a narrow, rickety bridge crossing it. You can't see much further beyond that, but you would bet that whatever is firing is from the other side of that bridge. So this isn't a separate trap is what he's saying, though. It's like just the tunnel is been carved away yeah, to be... just the tunnel is carved away to be extra steep and slippery. Okay. Um, I'm going to use Indomitable to reroll that. Um, I can put that up here and so it consumes the ability on my sheet. Uh, basically just lets me reroll. Um, 22. A 22. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, Kabu. Oh. It's you are right behind Ulrich and are no longer in the uh, little alcove there. Roll a... <laughs> Roll a deck save for me, please. Yep. Uh... Where are my saves at? <laughs> uh, I uh, you click on you click on the ability. So oh, okay. yeah, attributes. Click on deck. Click saving on saving throw. There we go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thirteen. <laughs> I'm gonna flash okay. a genius myself. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <make it> Seventeen. <laughs> okay, you are able to uh, also dive out of the way as you hear echoing and bouncing around you this sound. And again, another giant bolt sails past both of your heads and embeds itself into the stone wall behind you both, right next to the other one. And again, you will hear grunts and cranking. What direction is this sound coming from? This way or? Everywhere. This? In this cavern. Oh, it's echoey as shit, isn't it? All right. Based on the direction of the two shots we've gotten, can we start to kind of coordinate? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like it's coming from the bolts are definitely coming from down in front of you, uh, but in front of you, you are standing at the press. You know that waterfall we slid down. Oh, Yo, hey, you're I'm standing at the top of that right now, and at the very bottom is a bridge going across a gaping abyss, and then on the other side is where the bolts are coming from. Okay, and and what is this landing uh, safe patch? It's like uh, a, about five feet up, uh, like a little shelf almost just naturally in the cave, like a little alcove up on a little shelf. Mm -hmm. But you would have to somehow slide your way over there and then grab something, get up there, and there's still stalactites all over the ceiling. All right. No, yes. Lenore, I know this is a little bit childish. Shall we just volley our short bows into the distance and see if we can hit anything? Let's see what lands. Uh, is that his a plan? I'm not sure. Uh, I, can't, I mean, I can't right now, you, yet, so Nick, no and Lenore wouldn't be like, yeah, you're not in range of or have you on anything yeah. that's happening. But we're definitely seeing. Giant oh, bolts come just flying, come flying in front of you. Yeah. <laughs> um, just giant missiles. 
If only we had someone that could fly. He goes running. He goes <laughs> running past, uh, and he takes a step forward, and his ears just go. Oh, oh no! Oh, no. It is, and he flies. Oh no! He can fly. He can fly. He can fly. He flies now. Mr. Santos! This is all your fault. This is... <laughs> what happened? I you don't even you? know. Did we, did we, what did we want? Did we just want, like, art? four decks? <laughs> or do we want art of uh, <laughs> this happening? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I missed what happened. <laughs> uh, Mr. Panic. Saito the... just tipped. Oh, Can you... Can you look at the Streamlabs thing, Luca? Because he did list what he. Oh, okay. Suggested. Let me look. Uh... The 10 magic items. <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> it was very, very small on the overlay, so I couldn't read it. Um... <laughs> 10 magic frying pans, are you sure? <laughs> Ten ma okay. <laughs> Everyone gets two. Dual wield. Yes. Forty good tables. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. No, chat, showing. stop saying twenty Reload. bad tables. That would kill us. All heals. <laughs> all heals. Oh my god. We are gone. We can all suddenly fly. Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I am not fair. seeing it right now. My thing uh, is not updating. How much do I have to pay to make my fat hobbit fly with his big hobbit feet? Two hundred forty. That's just walking. <laughs> just walking with extra steps. I love that Saito just like drops something and then disappears. He does. <laughs> he's he's so, yeah. bad. A literal leprechaun of a human being. He doesn't want to. He doesn't want to tell us what his secrets are. He just floats into oblivion. Um. Well, then I will continue on with a huge thank you, Mr. Saito. Um. And we can, if there's requests specifically for what you would like that used on, we can deal with that. But meanwhile. Uh, we have a flying loxodon using his ears <laughs> to flap uh, above this slippery slope of ice. And where are you going, Ego? Um, going towards wherever these crossbow bolts were coming from, uh, wherever the ballista bolts were coming from. I'm assuming if they were able to pinpoint the trajectory trajectory I would have been to as well. So just down down the slope and towards the bridge and then, you know, kind of zigzagging through the air so I'm a hard target to, to hit. Well, it is still cranking right now. So, I mean, from all of those sounds being mm -hmm. echoing about, you know, you've probably got some time. Okay. So yeah, just, uh, just straight towards wherever the... Uh, the bolts have been coming from. Okay. Uh, while you are flying the air, what is everyone else doing? Hey. It is the definition of a himbo. They do dumb things and make it happen. Ulrich's letting go and is going to try and take a controlled slide down this chute. I love it so much. So, so much. <laughs> it's a bad it idea, but I still love it. It's, okay. I'm going to make an interesting mistake. <laughs> gonna take the sword out, cross his arms, and just down the ice. Yeah, okay. um... Be careful, Mr. Ulrich. Oh, he's a bardic inspiration. Oh. Be oh. careful. Oh. Ulrich has decided to take chances, make mistakes, and get messy. Mm-hmm. Let's, uh, let's do it. Let's oh, roll, Not uh, messy on athletics. the cavern floor. Uh, or acrobatics? Okay. I would accept either. I would like to do athletics instead, uh, mm -hmm. and I'll use my inspiration. Using your I'm... muscles to try and like control your body's uh, uh, movement. Nineteen. A nineteen. You are able 
to descend down it, uh, grabbing uh, something that fell from Ego's pack as he was flying about, uh, and then <laughs> you are able to descend. Can it literally be a grappling hook? Like... <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> Roll for it. Uh, and I'm going to have you actually go past your, like, allowed movement as you reach the bottom and put out a foot and kind of hook your leg against this giant stake that's holding one of the sides of the bridge in. Just, like, yeah, back over the edge, head, like, for a brief moment, feels the inertia just keep going and, like... Okay, that might... That might have been a bad idea. <laughs> what is everyone else doing? Uh... Perhaps of me wants to... Ah, oh, what, what do they say? I will send it? <laughs> send it, <Maybe>. bro. <laughs> Alright, here's a, here's a great plan. Is there plan. any way to go down this safely? Probably not. Chauncey is going to go to the parapet of this big ice slide. And what's like the highest level I can cast it at? Pretty high. Sure. Uh, he's going to create food and water. And uh, so I create 30 gallons of gravy, piping hot gravy oh, that he's going to pour in a stream down the center of uh, of of this uh, of this little root to create. Hopefully, it will start to melt a nice little slide that will go straight down to where Ulrich is. As someone who is at the bottom of this slide of mm -hmm. liquid hot Thanksgiving, <laughs> it will it will cool quite a bit by arriving to you, like putting oh, a whole good. bunch of ice cubes in the gravy, kind of. Uh, <laughs> So by the time it gets to you, it's going to be a lot of melted ice and sludgy cold gravy cooling up I'm, against you. It's going to really I, just be a crunchy like. I'm going to take that. I'm going to take covering. a hand. I'm going to take a handful of this gravy slurpee and just. <laughs> it's my gravy slurpee. It's a savory alternative to the cherry lumpy. Disgusting. Then, it's gonna, very good. He's gonna, Take take his uh, his magical non-spilling frying pan and um, cast. Uh, what can we do? Cast enlarge on it. <laughs> climb on top of it and ride it in the little sort of bobsleigh slalom that he's now made all the way down for Uruk to catch him. Oh oh oh! All this right, is the thing I have to do go now. ahead and catch him. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> He's, you've got a little bobslaying hobbit on a frying pan. Uh, I, will down a gravy I will, I will, I will try and stop him from falling into the endless abyss of death. That'd be grand if you could, Mister. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll. Roll bully. athletics, uh, or oh, okay. or uh, acrobatics to reach out and just grab him, hook him in. Okay. 23. You do so. so handily. He comes barely by surfing this gravy ice sludge on his frying pan that's enlarged. And you are able to just reach out and hook this little halfling around his middle uh, and cradle him next to you in this sludgy goop pile that is currently you. Uh, it's seeping in under your armor. It's really just a a whole feeling uh, and you guys are now sitting at the bottom at the at the edge of this thing the the uh, cranking sound has stopped echoing oh, Thank you sir great minds think alike eh I would like to use his gravy pan as a makeshift fortification all right so you're gonna just <laughs> grab that from him and put it in front I, of me I, I, if I am cradling that. him I assume his his pot is still large, and I will turn yeah. it to the sound of this crank. All right, uh, it's, it's like actually a four foot large frying pan now. Ego, roll a dex check for me as you're flying about through the air. Oh, they're gonna fucking AA gun dump dex it down. Dex check or dex save? Uh, dex save. Sorry. 
15. Barely made it. <laughs> uh, the uh, ballista bolt is he just going to past your head and impale itself into the rock uh, behind you. Which is awfully rude. Uh, can Ego retaliate real quick? Sure. Uh, let's go ahead and roll initiative, but you'll get one off. Okay. Um, I'll wait until you do the encounter. Um, <clears throat> Ego will uh, fly down uh, and land right it says it's colliding with a wall. Hold on. He wants to land right. Well, come. Look, I can't move it. Can you move me right here? Mm hmm. Uh, and he's going to just look disapprovingly. What? What just happened? I have no <laughs> idea. You've been deleted. <gasps> uh, he's just going to look disapprovingly at the the three hog goblins and is going to reach out a hand and grab the ballista and is going to uh, use shape plants because it is a, it is made out of plant life we have discussed this before wood can count as plant life what no yes <laughs> that was in a different campaign sweetie how dare! <laughs> <laughs> and it was for a specific bad table. Rude. <laughs> but thanks Rude. for playing. <laughs> I am angry. Um, I thought you were at ego. <laughs> funny. Um, let's see. Yeah, this here. Uh, Ego is going to land there and just shake his head at the three of them um, and is going to cast Spirit Guardians um, and those three right there uh, I, I'm will... Hold on before you get wild I was allowing you your one thing before we started initiative so before you try and cast Spirit Guardians Please roll initiative, as well as everyone else. Oh, no. Feels bad. What do you mean it feels bad? It's initiative. <laughs> yeah, but you don't know what chance he's got up his sleeve next. Ooh, I didn't roll Other than lots of gravy company. <laughs> Meat-based yeah. beverage. There's a lot of gravy everywhere. It's a gravy <laughs> ice shoot. Ice luge. It's the weirdest mm. frat party I've ever been to. Uh, okay, Kabu actually is first up. Uh, right. And I'm going to change the music here. So uh, Kabu is going to reach down and uh, uh, say, hey, Kit, uh, lock up for a second. And grabs Kit by his handle on his top and mm -hmm. kind of lifts him up and goes, it looks like it's popping off. And when he says it's popping off, he uh, clicks a button on his belt and a uh, propeller pops out of the back of his shirt and mm -hmm. starts spinning as he casts fly on himself. Okay. And he's Excellent. gonna Mary Poppins his way into the fray. <laughs> Mary Poppins, y'all. Uh, okay. Feel free to move uh, you and Kit forward. Uh, is... You said each square is 10? Yes. All right, and fly, I believe, In is... In theory, ideally, it should measure, measure as such, but. Uh, so I got 60 feet. Perfect. So that's one, two, three, four, five. And I guess six would be here. Okay. Um, you, you join the bottom of the ice uh, and gravy slurry. <laughs> he just kind of looks and is like, oh, God. <laughs> um, and uh, ooh, how far are they? They're pretty far out, aren't they? Mm-hmm. Um, can Kabu see which one is operating the... Uh, two of them are, though one could. But for okay. quickness and speed, two of them are working on it. 
Uh, he's going to take aim at... Oh, no. He's... He can't do anything because he casts a spell. Okay. So, yeah. That's it. Okay. Uh, on to Chauncey. <laughs> Hmm. <laughs> I think so. Perfect. What we're going to do is I'm going to cast. Um, oh, okay. I can't. That's even more fun. Sure. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Well, first up, we're going to get moving. We're going to get moving along this tiny bridge. The little rickety bridge. It's going to be five feet, because that's all my little legs can manage. But he's Go ahead wiggling. and roll a deck save for me as you cross that bridge. Oh, crumbs. Hey. Ooh, how does a 12 sound? Uh, you are going to feel something snake around your middle, and you will be lifted up off of the bridge. Um, oh, crumbs. Okay. Uh, you, let's see here. Uh, you are restrained and have disadvantage on strength checks and strength saving throws. Uh -huh. Very fun. Because I assume a 25 hits, correct? <laughs> Oh, uh, it glances. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, is there uh, anything else you would like to do? Um, sure. Maybe. Yeah. Work with. <laughs> Darn it. Uh. No, everything's too far away. It's fine. Okay. I can't do much. So that will do me. Boop. <laughs> perfect. Okay. The perfect turn. Lenore. Okay. All the um, way uh, back here. Let's see. Yeah. <laughs> I'm way back here. So I'm gonna hopefully if I can select my token. There we go. Um, spend 30 minute movement going up to here. And question. Do the walls, like, are they entirely smoothed out or are there, like, things that you could, like, potentially, like, there is, a, I mean, it is rock. Like, this is a mountain okay. cave. It's not just, like, one of those pure ice caves. However, quite a bit of the interior is iced over with frozen water. Um, but I'm sure you could find a few patches here and there where you're able to actually brush up against rock. Okay. Um, so what she is going to do... Um, uh, whoever can still see her at this point, um, the somehow this wind just kind of starts to appear only around her, and her hair begins kind of whip wildly as uh, she uses a Ganassi trait to cast Levitate on herself, and hopefully, like the plan is to kind of like almost like a swimmer, like uh, flip turns off of a wall, just go wall to wall to wall, okay, down the tunnel. Excellent. You can do that, and you oh, will not have to ride the the, the gravy slurry. <laughs> She's not doing uh, it. Luge. She took one look and was like, "Nope." Very <laughs> good. Um, okay, so you're heading down that way, and then is there anything else you can do with your turn? Um. Well, I can cunning action. So can I use that movement to like do that first push of? Uh, the wall because I can dash with a bonus action basically. So. Okay, yeah, we'll we'll just get you down by Ulrich then. All right, cool. You're just you're gliding along, uh, <laughs> pushing yourself off these walls. Ego, cool. now you may do your spirit guardians. <laughs> okay, and can you? I'm still gliding with wall. Can you put me like in between this? guy and the... Oh, I see the problem here. Hold on just a second. Okay. Walls? Where we're there going, you go. we don't need walls. Alright. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um... So, yes. I will cast Spirit 
guardians uh, and ignore the damage uh, because it happens on their turn. Okay. Uh, but all around me in a how, how far? 15 foot radius. Uh, all around. Stop that. In a 15 foot radius. 30 feet right there. Um, Ego kind of clasps his hands together and these two uh, spectral um, kind of medium-sized pseudo-dragons begin to swarm and encircle uh, Ego and kind of crash into whatever enemies are in the area. Uh, And that's his action... Uh, that's his turn. Okay, so when do I apply that 13 damage? Uh, on their turn, they need to make a wisdom save. Okay, very good. Okay. So, he needs to make a wisdom save. A 19? Yep. Um... So he takes six radiant damage. Okay. Okay. Uh, and then he is going to... You landed, correct? Yeah. All right. He is going to hit you with his long sword. Okay. Um... Uh, oop. A 20 to hit. And he is going to use a martial advantage, so it will be 4 plus 7. So 11. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. And then it is Ulrich's turn. All right. Uh, is Chauncey still relatively. Just he has there. a tendril around him and is uh, beginning to get lifted. He is restrained, mm. but he has not been reeled up yet. Now, could I, uh, judging by the size of this thing, could I like attack the tendril alone, or would it would that take more of a? I need to pull him down to the ground and out of this thing. Kind of check. I'm asking if it's a, if I get an attack or a, you, if it's a you grapple. could, but you would have to. Uh, like it, it's essentially just an attack against the creature. Mm, well, he'll try and cut. He'll try and cut him down with movement. Okay. Back. He'll rush in and uh, swipe. Oof. Okay, that's a 13 to hit. That will not hit. One. All right, well, good news. We can make a second, and that's a 20 to hit. Okay, that'll hit. All right, that's going to be for 11 damage, and he's going to place his unwavering mark on that creature. Uh, as he shouts up, pick on, pick on someone your own size. Uh, and uh that's not interesting it's a resource, but it was eleven. Uh eleven damage. Yes. Okay, that tendril will be uh will be released. Exceptional. So uh, fit you, sir. Just move. Well I was planning on moving until this big tendril came and scooped me up. Well, then keep moving. Oh, Right, I guess so. Better not sit here like yesterday's potatoes. Um, and that, for the moment, is going to be his turn. Okay. Um, I need you to... Oh no, now Lucas talking like Shatner. <laughs> uh, sorry, I'm thinking. I need you to... Um, Rocket Man. Uh... Uh, can you Burning. both? Oh Actually, no, I'm, it's, what am I doing? <laughs> okay, that's 
11 will probably not hit. Ooh, and nor a 13, but let's do, let's just keep doing this. Since I can do it up to six Sorry, times. Sorry, what is your armor class, Chauncey? 11. We have got to gear him up. Hey, <laughs> uh, here's the feature I can so do. Sad. It's called warding maneuver. Chauncey, roll a d8 for me, would you? Oh, sounds... How many times can you do it? Because I can, I can do this attack six times. Six times, you say. Okay, well... Uh, I can do it three times per reaction, so per round. Oh, rather, one time per round, so... Yeah. This is... I right. got a four! So, your AC is increased by that number. Ooh. Ooh. That's one of the... Well, for the round? Entirely? Uh, against that attack. Okay, so okay, for one so of the attacks eight, that is. Nine, 13, 8, I'm rolling terribly. 13, 11. Well, damn. Wow, that was actually clutch. <laughs> All right. So none of those are going to get you. Um, Alex's just going to step and throw his shield right in front of it, sending all those tendrils back into the deep. Wild. Oh, mm -hmm. very much, sir. Can't help but feel like it wasn't designed for these kinds of missions. <laughs> What? We just, we just let him go. What are you made for? <laughs> I'm the chef, sir. <laughs> Don't worry, Nick is well, doing this, this problem, too. Give it all you've got. Oh, Happy enjoy me nice, sir. Finished cranking up this ballista. Uh, this guy is going to release it. Abu. Herp. Please roll a deck save for me. Okay. Attributes, dexterity, saving throw. Oh. Okay. Wait, they got the ballista working already? The, like, yeah, you engaged like one person. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, Kavu. So. Try to see if there's something I can do. <laughs> 21 damage as the bolt comes flying through the air. Please roll a strength check to see if you are knocked backwards. 19. Okay, so you are not, you take this hit uh, and it just impales into you. Uh, and go ahead and take that 21 damage. Okay. And having uh, sent that off, um, he is. Uh, did he roll a wisdom save? Oh, let me roll that. Oh, no. A 19? Yeah, so he takes six damage. Okay. Okay. Um, and he is going to, with his offhand, just reach up and like fire his. Uh... Where are you? A twenty to hit. Who was he shooting? Uh, ego. Yeah, that hits. Okay. Nine piercing. Okay. All right. And then he looks like he's going to start cranking it up again. Who's this guy? This guy is going to turn to you and swing his longsword, Ego. He makes a wisdom save first. Oh, okay. Oh, a three. And he takes he takes thirteen damage. Oh, all right. He's not gonna swing his sword because he's gonna die. <laughs> oh. Okay. Um. I just went. 
Where's this guy? Okay, and he is going to step down this way and fire at you, Ego. With 11 to hit. Okay. That hits. It hits? Miss. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. And then I think we are back at the top of the round. Yes. Taboo. Two, three, four, five. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and fly to, I think, here will get me 60. Okay. And I'm going to open fire on this guy. All right. Hopefully hitting. Uh, if I'm flying up in the air, do I have an advantage? Because I have the high ground? <laughs> yes, sure. Yes! 22 to hit. <laughs> okay, but you have to say it's over, Hobgoblin. <laughs> and I'll say it in Goblin, too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, 22. Uh, that's, that's the hit. To hit, and, and then, then 8, eight piercing damage. damage. Oh. Yes. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> he is going to scream out in Goblin, I hate you! Uh, and then die. <laughs> I don't even know you, dude. All right. <laughs> uh, and then I'm going to see the one that's attacking Ego and shoot him. Okay. Uh, are these all with advantage or just the first one? Just the first one. Okay. No, just check. Uh, 25 to hit still. Okay. Yeah, that's going to hit. Okay. And six damage. Okay. And then very Han Solo like just. Swing around since I see this guy over here. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's see if I can hit him too. 23 to hit. A 23 to hit will hit. All right. And nine damage. Uh huh. No, he's going to go down. He's going to drop. And then uh, he'll kind of like gunslinger his uh, hand cross. <laughs> okay. This is how we do it, gentlemen. <laughs> and ladies, I'm sorry. <laughs> Nick, and you are those up. <laughs> uh, I totally forgot to uh, roll Babies and my initiative and last, last time around. So he's just going to come on, do the thing. He's going to run around and oh, stupid. Is walls. he going to slide down the gravy luge? Unfortunately, he cannot make it to the Gravy Luge. Uh, he is just at the top of the Gravy Luge, even with his 90 feet of movement. So uh, he'll end his turn at the top of the Gravy Luge, and he'll look down and he'll say, I just polished my hooves. <laughs> it's a hard life. It's a hard knock life. Try and run to, to the end of the bridge as fast as he can after Ulrich's advice. And he'll look at the last hobgoblin and he'll just like he'll look tired and he's covered in gravy and snow and he's got like tendril slime around him and he's a bit battered and bruised and he's like out of breath huffing and puffing hands on his knees looks up his little ruddy red face looks at the hobgoblin and goes oh come on mate ease up and he's gonna cast charm person on the hobgoblin <laughs> okay what and do i have to get advantage roll. advantage on a wisdom save because we're fighting wisdom. him wisdom Advantage. <laughs> Oof. DC right. 15. Yep. Okay. He's gonna just kind of like set down uh, his like weapon. Just, his arm's just gonna kind of loosely drop. He's gonna kind of look up and he's like, oh, "You smell. You smell real nice, man. Like." You're me. It's uh, it's my best. Uh, my best gravy? chunky. It it is. I've good. made an entire luge of it over there. You owe yourself, mate. You might. I'm, I'm hungry. You got anything right? else on you? Um, well, I, I, could, I tell you what. I've got my signature dish right here. Have you ever tried a cherry lumpy before? Oh, no, I haven't, man. Oh, here we are, son. Oh, it's it's going to blow your ever-loving mind. Bam. Cast good cherry. <laughs> make my cherry lumpies. 
All right, he's gonna take it from me with the little. Uh, I'm sure it's one of those striped straws and everything. Yeah. And just start. Uh, and he, oh man, this is this is really good. Right. Yeah. Now ain't this better than murdering us all with that great big blister there? Tell you what, oh, yeah. why don't so you wander better. over there and out yourself to some of my chunkies and my lumpies and we'll all naff off over here, right? You know, you're a cool guy and I, I, I think I'm going to do that. Nice. Well, I'm glad yeah. we have this little chin wag. Um, yeah. Right, don't worry about any of these folks. They're, they're just grand dookie dooks. All right, yeah. No, thanks for this. And he's going to continue slurping on that and just uh, start to walk right past y'all. Uh, like heading towards the bridge to go get himself some iced uh, gravy <laughs> on your recommendation. There you go. See, a little bit of hospitality. Treating people <laughs> like people goes a long way there. Uh, Ego will drop the spiritual guardians. Just very well handled, Chauncey. Very well handled. Good See, job. you don't need to go around biffing people in the chops. Here, mate. There's a lovely sleeping bag round the corner. Once you've had your fill, why don't you go snooze it off? See, it'll be done in no time. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for the tip. See, no worries, mate. Yeah, is he crossing the bridge? <laughs> <laughs> He's going to, yeah. I mean, it's not his turn yet, but he is absolutely going to cross that bridge. Can we I worry about why you ask. One second. <laughs> Can we all, like do nothing on our turns until he uh, crosses. Oh. oh. If you want to, Lenore, uh, you you see Very this happening from across uh, the bridge. What do you do? Is this expressed to the party at all? Is it? Ulrich? He's... What, I mean, you like, also see this happening, but you're not up there in the mix, so. Ul Ulrich sees a guy slurping on some slurping on a straw after getting it from Chauncey. I feel like he can. Whoa! I did not take the chef feet to be called gross, disgusting, and make horrible gravy. Everything is lovely, all right. I didn't say anything of the sort. I'm just saying, I feel like my gravy's getting some right bad compliments here. I said this guy got it from you. He got a straw from you. Oh, and I... I'm going to let him cross the bridge. I'm just going to yeah, kind of gonna... like... I made 30 gallons of gravy to pour down there. There's plenty to go around if you're jealous. You can have your own straw. You don't have to share. <laughs> so, yes or no? Uh, <laughs> this is just the yes or no answer. Has this been expressed to the party or not? Yeah, this is one of those you will uh, see Ulrich, binary. <laughs> like, you will please, see Ulrich, just yes or no. Stop tensing and like take a step back, because he is literally a hobgoblin with a like like a juice like a pack. Capri Sun, like a Capri Sun, <laughs> just on his way. Like that's not a threat. Okay. Um. Yeah, if she sees that, she'll follow Ulrich's lead, probably, and just kind of, yeah, just kind of just stay by the edge here, I guess. And, um... How long would that go for? The... John Thurston. Ooh, an hour. It lasts for an hour. Yeah, that lasts for an hour. Um, I'm not sure what she He's got a lot of gravy to drink. Um, just... just... She Pass. will hold and oh gosh, um, she will hold an attack if it grabs a member of the party. Okay, and you are not counting the hobgoblin as the party. Yes, that is the distinction. Ego. Uh, question. Ego, having not, having been in the middle of combat when Chauncey was grabbed, does have an extremely high passive perception. Would the Ego know that there is a roper above the bridge? Yes. You would know that he's somewhere out there. You would have no, I mean, so many stalactites, you would have no idea which one yeah. would be him or where he might be. Yeah. 
uh, Eagle will just kind of lean down towards the hobgoblin and say, be sure to watch out for those stalactite things. We don't want you to die, friend. Oh, yeah, the roper. No, it's out there somewhere. I'll try and keep an eye out. Thanks again, buddy. He's going to call back to Chelsea. <laughs> All right, mate, don't you worry, you take it easy. Watch out for that lifty bastard. He's a pain in the proverbial. <laughs> All right, uh, it's his turn, and he is going to walk across uh, the, the, the bridge. But uh, it's his turn, it's nothing else's turn. Uh, so he's just going across. Ulrich, it's your turn. I am going to... Ho I'm going to... Once this your turn thing gets out of the way, I'm going to just step back as if to make way for him to get to the gravy. And also look back to Nick. Like, <laughs> you want to slide down, I can catch you. And I will hopefully let nature do its wonderful work. Mm-hmm. Oh, crumbs. Poor hobgoblin. <laughs> it's not what I intended at all. This is 100% what you intended. I know usually on these sorts of missions you have all the stories of all the punching and all the kicking and all the fighting and the biffing and the chops, but this is a chancy game. I just wanted to give a hobgoblin some gravy. <laughs> This is our first friend. But, uh, oh, you yeah, you guys you are going to see a tendril reach down and grab this thing. Uh, and uh, Ulrich. No. And Lenore. Also no. Does an 11 hit? No. Okay. Nope. Well, it's going to try it again because it's, it's got more 21, you. Ulrich. Yeah, uh, no, I'm going to warding maneuver that, which okay. I literally can roll minimum, and uh, I will be fine. So, um, yeah. Okay. Uh, it has this thing. Uh, this this dude is restrained and tendrilled, and he's just gonna kind of like take the straw out of his mouth and look down and go like, "Oh the crap!" Um, and then uh, it is now uh, like, is anyone doing anything, or should I just yeah. resolve this situation? No. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, Kabu, it's your turn. <laughs> Yeah, we could try. I was thinking we could try to shoot the roper with it. Shoot the roper with the ballista. Pew pew yes. pew. Okay, go ahead. Um, go. I will roll a deck save for this thing. <laughs> Let go of my buddy, you bastard! <laughs> oh, what's that? That's a deck save. <laughs> oh no! Okay. A zero. Yep. Chauncey's a dead eye. So, <laughs> so, so 21 me, damage to the roper, uh, and it's going to take you, uh, you know, probably a round or two to crank that thing back up. Is Kabu helping you? Yeah, absolutely, Kabu is Go helping you. Go ahead and do yeah, it again. Uh, let's You're have me small. roll a deck save. <laughs> you guys <laughs> Your roper just got a zero and then a two Listen, it's basically oh, it a is. stalactite that has it's grown tentacles <laughs> I like the idea that when we're winding it up Because we're both small Like the other yeah. one is being lifted off the ground <laughs> As the turn around Small squad. <laughs> uh, you're gonna see some weird bits of like rock start to fall from this thing, uh, cause like he's just about bloodied at this point. You guys continue. Are you guys just cranking as fast Hell as you can? Yes. Give me my friend back, you All prick. Right. Uh. <laughs> oh. Oh. So uh, 
it is going to evade this next ballista, and as such, it is going to drop the hobgoblin and go still, and you guys are gonna be unable to tell where it went. Here, that one we just hit twice, and then again, I now don't know which one it is on this ceiling. <laughs> Despite the fact we shot it a couple of times, it could have been any of them. <laughs> it says right here in the book. <laughs> Okie doke! He it away, let's go. I was too small to see down the sight, so I was just firing blind and happened to hit it. How heavy is this ballista? <laughs> Pretty heavy, but I mean, if if you were to get Ego's help or one of the larger uh, creatures, you could probably uh, move it about. I don't know about you two. Roll me some strength checks if you're trying to lift this thing up. Uh, can I get uh, Kit to help me? Sure. I can. I can give you. I can give you uh, bardic inspiration. Oh, okay. okay. There you go. It's an extra seven. Sixteen. I'm gonna go ahead and. Uh... Add four to that, make it a 20. Okay, what are you doing with this ballista? Just lifting it up? Giant crossbow? I mean, Kit. yeah, Kit has a uh, strength of 14. Can I, like, mount it onto him? A strength of 14? Uh, this thing's pretty large. What's his size rating? He's a medium. Um... Yeah, but it's going to affect him negatively. Uh, like, uh, he's not going to be able to, like, help you with future stuff. Like, this is going to be his only thing that he does. So you can only move with it. Yep. You know what? I'm okay with that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> small squad. Yeah, I'm, small squad. I'm thinking down the road here. Okay, so... <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna take you out of uh, combat <laughs> as, as your buddy continues to just walk down, and he's gonna get to the gravy, and he's gonna like uh, you know just kind of having finished the lumpy, he's actually gonna take out and kind of like dump out the just the remaining like sludge as best as he can, so it's kind of clean, and then he's gonna try and scoop up and just smush in some icy gravy. And plop mm -hmm. the straw back in, and then he's going to uh, take some crampons out of his backpack and strap them on the back, a bottom of his feet and start hiking up this uh, steep incline here. Enjoying his savory Slurpee. Yep. <laughs> My name uh, is Jeremy. You're rush. <laughs> Thanks again. They call it riding gravy train. You're good to do. <laughs> Um, uh, okay, so what are you guys just doing? So it's young gravy. Nick, uh, Hobgoblin with uh, an icy gravy slurpee is going to pass you by and just kind of give you a friendly hobby. nod as he ice uh, crampons past you. Where is Nick? <laughs> At the top of the sluice. <laughs> this is really the only way down. Look, I can <laughs> catch you. <laughs> Ugh, and he will at long last, descend the gravy slide. I'm ready to catch. If need be, or... You'll see him kind of flicking his hooves the ballista, but... as he uh, uh, crosses this bridge, trying to rub off as much gravy from the bottoms of his hooves as possible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, no tendrils come sneaking down from the ceiling. Uh, clearly, whatever this thing was, it has deemed you guys too much of a nuisance. Yeah, it knows not to mess with small squad. Is Lenore <laughs> still floating? Uh, is Lenore still floating? Um, she can be. She's still concentrating on levitate. Okay. Alric's just gonna, like, offer a hand up into the air. Like, <laughs> you need a way to cross quickly? Uh, that, that would be great, actually. Right. Uh, yeah, see. Grab, grab hands, and I will walk her across like a balloon. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean the same thing. I'm a balloon. Okay. Uh, very good. Uh, what are you guys doing? 
Well, there's treasure over there, isn't it? Uh, Nick said I'd take a quick look for... The treasure the made along the way. <laughs> the real treasure is the gravy we made along the way. Um, it does gonna take a easy. quick uh, rifle through the chest here and see if there's anything related to that little map that he saw. Uh, no. However, uh, there are there's quite a bit of money, thirty more gems, but these are just worth like fifty gold pieces each, and there's four potions of healing. Hey. Lovely. Ooh. Save those for later. Uh, speaking of healing, <clears throat> uh, Ego is going to heal himself really quick. He walks around this corner and just kind of I'm keeping sticking, an, keep an sticking. eye on the ceilings. <laughs> yeah, I'm sticking close to Ego. Okay. Nick's so going to play fetch with uh, Kid again. <laughs> He's kind of testing his reflexes. Oh. Throwing gems side to side. Kit's encumbered. He's got a ballista. Yeah, they are just going to hit and like oh, no. fall clattering to the Kit, floor. What happened to you? Because <laughs> Kit just has a giant ballista yeah. like that it's kind of like holding on top of it. <laughs> Kit's got into battle mode, folks. <laughs> it's in siege mode. A mobile it kid. would seem. Uh, Ego, you see in front of you a few uh, cavern alcoves tucked away, and inside of them are cages fashioned from wood, bone, and rope. Bone, you said? Mm hmm. What kind of bone? Various. <laughs> My favorite kind, favorite kind of skulls. bones. <laughs> yeah. They're the best kind. Go, Jinx. Go get a biology bone. degree, you nerd. Uh, Various types of bone. Nothing inside of these cages? Uh, not inside of that one, though you will will hear some clanking, echoing, and bouncing back at you. And you will see that there are two people um, looking very worse for wear. Uh, <laughs> there's a, a woman in her middle ages and then a younger man. Um, and they both mechanically have two levels of exhaustion and about one hit point each. And after everything they've gone through, they look up and they see an elephant, a goblin, and a, tre uh, a mimic with a ballista on top of them walk into the room. Honestly, they're barely going to react because they are so out of it. Oh like, they're just kind of like... And, and they'll just kind of like curl right. and huddle back up. Uh, Kabu is immediately going to go to one of the cages and open it up. Uh-huh. Hey, hey, buddy. Hey. Ah, it's okay. You're, you're safe now. Okay, he's going to yeah, kind of moan. Well. He seems extremely malnourished and just extremely beat up. Oh, Chauncey. <laughs> Here. Fortunately, I made a batch of lumpies. I've got nine more to use up. Uh, okay. Are you uh, just handing him a lumpy? Yeah. Here you are, right. mate. Get he's your gonna, smackers he's around He's gonna it. take it, and it's actually gonna fall from his fingers. His grip strength seems a little weak. Oh, mate. Yeah, of course. You'll need a straw, won't you? Here you are. <laughs> and I'll hold it, and I'll put the straw, like, in his mouth. Like, All right, he's gonna sip at it very slowly um and Brain. just uh kind of just very slowly sip at it bit by bit are you two adventurers uh, just traveling oh. Oh. are you N new what who are you we we've dealt with the the hobgoblins and we're here to rescue you uh get your strength we will be leaving soon not probably should check the rest of the cave just to be sure here the skull collector won't let you leave i'll do the same for this one you'll also get a lumpy all right she's Who's... actually gonna drink it and like kind of gag it up a little bit at first uh, oh, don't worry about that. Everyone has that reaction at first. You should have seen the gravy trail we followed here. She'll keep trying. 
Who was the, the skull collector? It wasn't the, uh, the fire giant? No. No, skull, uh, big white dragon. White dragon. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> Alright, folks, uh, time to go. <laughs> yeah, we ain't seen no dragon. I don't know what you're talking about. He hoards skulls like, like gold. Is there any way we can get these folks safely out of here? Yeah, that's what I was gonna ask. Are there anything that like need to be like disarmed or like untied or like? Uh, th like uh, honestly, these guys are in such a state <laughs> that the locks on these cages weren't that much of you for you to undo. Uh, they were certainly not in a position to do anything should they have gotten open these cages. No one was very concerned that they were gonna escape. They were safer inside the cage than outside. <laughs> You're not wrong. This is Celia's. I mean, I can reduce one of them down to a smaller size so they can be carried. I think the best thing we gotta do is make sure we got this place cleared out so we can get them out of here. If there's still something uh, walking about, hopefully that rope is not gonna give us any trouble anymore. But, uh, but a dragon. It, yeah, a dragon is one thing. I I wasn't with the group that faced the first one. But are there more along the way? It looked like there was a little bit more of the cave that went further down from where we were just now. <laughs> All right. That could be more good, you always. Uh, Hi, it, that's me. Oh, Rick, yeah. do you want to leg up? You're starting to see the end, like the the edges of like, and it's just about like a five foot step up here. Uh, but up on this shelf, there are skulls. And they appear to be climbing in like a large pile. Uh, I think I think there's some kind of horde back there. Kabu, Kabu's going to make sure he gets back to the group to let them know. Hey, uh, guys, uh, skull collector's a dragon. Oh, fuck no. A oh, white good. dragon. Oh, that makes it easier, doesn't it? It makes it something. Hey, so we'll just pop them off then. We got we got injured back there that need to get out of here. Right. So we get them going, or rather we like we let them sit there. We handle the dragon and we get out of here. Oh no! It's a Warhammer reference. Is it? It's it's Warhammer. Oh, I'm, no, glad no. uh, I'm glad your cadence went back to normal. That's good to hear. If you're looking up at, this, uh, at these uh, skulls, this pile, this horde continues to climb, and the ceilings are actually quite high over here. This pile looks to be over 100 feet tall. That's oh, so, killed that's a, a lot of people. That's, that's a collection. <laughs> there's a collection, and then there's an obsession. There's a horde. You should... Never forget. Hey, Mr. 20 Perception that's standing right there. Uh, Nick. That There's almost like perception. some shuffling of a few skulls as if something is underneath this pile. Hey, so why don't you get them out of here and uh, we'll, make sh uh, we'll make sure this dragon doesn't get up. <laughs> Kabu's going to run back to everyone. <laughs> I think the dragon's just waiting for us to squirm away before it launches out of that pile of skulls. Right, well, that's what the ballista's for. Hey guys, we got uh, we got movement on the bone pile. Right, let's uh, let's let's get back out there. You you folks are, stay are here. Are you guys leaving? Then is that is that your plan, or are you? Climbing up onto the skull pile. Um, Lenora will turn to the other two and, or the uh, two prisoners, and ask, uh, "Do you know if there are uh, more, more adventurers that could be alive here, or are the last ones for for now? Uh, the others have already joined the pile." 
Just they are the only off. ones we would be completing the task. However, the root of the problem is still here. Hey, we gotta end this. Here, you don't mean we have to fight a dragon, do you? I, I think more importantly, let's let's group up. Right. Uh, I think the two of you should <laughs> stay here. In the meantime, the uh, Kabu will reach into Kit small and pull out some blankets. It's like, you guys, uh, you stay here, and um, I mean, if you think you can make a run for it, do it, but uh, you guys don't look like you're in no shape to run anywhere. Yeah, no, they'll take the blankets, and they will just kind of huddle back up. Uh, they've been here for a while. <laughs> Is it better to try to attack this dragon here, where its uh, nest is? Or should we try to lure it out and get it somewhere that it's going to struggle? Out in the open, where it can fly and have the aerial advantage. I was suggesting more of the more cavernous tunnels back the ways we came. But I guess you're right. You don't want it out in the open. This hole. We could certainly try, but then it could also fly. It has wings, probably. Uh, can Kabu do, like, an active perception check? Yeah. Go okay. ahead. It's listening to us now, that's for sure. <laughs> well, if it's listening, it should know oh, it's a giant <laughs> coward. Still a 16. Wait. Oh, I had it on advantage. Never mind. All right, so uh, Kabu, I don't yeah. know that I think, you I think really it was a two was the other one. I uh, can tell much. No. Yeah, I can't. Look, if someone needs to get this party going, I'm more than willing to start it. All right. Well, I think we need to heal up first if we're gonna do this, because I, I took a ballista bolt to the uh, to the thigh. Well, and, uh, load up your ballista bolt to put it into this thing's wing. I mean, that's the plan. <laughs> Believe me, I got a ballista now. I'm going to use it as much as I can. Nick grabs some of the healing potions from the chest that is still available and starts passing them out. I, I'll wave them off. I don't need any. How many do we have total? There were... Uh, there were first... four in the last one, and I'm not sure about the first one. The first yeah. one had a... Uh, oh, elixir, elixir of health. 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 Which I don't know what that is. Hang on, it had horseshoes of speed as well? Mm-hmm. What? I want to put those on Kit's wheels. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, who needs a potion? I don't think those are how wheels. Uh, I could probably use one. I could probably cure light myself. I don't know. Satyrs have hooves. Yeah. Oh? I got hooves, fuck. <laughs> I am at about half of my casting ability right now. So if we are going to do this, we need to do this smart. Yeah. That's all I did. You can always go and come back if we need to. Hey, Chauncey, you think your friend might be able to help us out for the next hour? <laughs> Well, I'll have to go and ask him, but it'll uh, mean me trekking all the way back through that big cavern. Mm. I only got little legs. Let's not split the party just now. <laughs> Let's just handle this thing and be on our way. All right. right well, I'm going to cast a cure on myself then. Use the potions first. Don't, don't Use the potion your, first? Okay. Don't, you, yeah. don't waste your uh, spell slots. All right, well, how much was the uh, potions? Uh, potions of healing are 2d4 plus 2, and then I'm not sure about the elixir of health. Oh, elixir of health cures you of any uh, afflictions, basically. Oh, right. oh. Oh, that's four. Up. Three. That's rough. I'm assuming all of this is taking place pretty quickly. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> you guys are just like, hurry, drink this. We're doing this. Yeah. Okay. Ul Ulrich will bring himself up on this plateau and prepare for preparation for an assault. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Nick will follow suit. Except there is a wall. There is a wall. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Can Sorry. Terrain. No uh, however, before you guys climb up and start uh, making a racket, uh, kicking about skulls uh, and scrambling over skulls, I think that we should take a break. Mm hmm. Sounds like a good mm -hmm. idea. Okay. okay. All right. <laughs> we will be right back. We are creeping up on the edge of this shelf upon which begins a over 100 foot tall pile of skulls under which something appears to be maybe breathing from the gentle rustle and clinking of skulls that Nick has noticed. What are you guys doing? Today we're going to be bashing around making a lot of noise, but I am going to be as stealthy as I can. Yeah, I'm right, getting roll up your on... stealth. Big save. I'm All getting right. up onto this landing. Ulrich, in your plate, you clank up on. I have the boots of Elvenkind. I am a normal sounding person, but yes, I do. <laughs> and I haven't made my plate yet, thank you very much. It's still scale mill. I. Or a I... Uh, 30, Luca. Okay, man, you just like slink back into the shadows. Uh, even your own party members kind of lose uh, sight of you. Um, Where'd Nick go? <laughs> Ulrich. I don't know if you've ever seen the Terminator movies, but there's no gentle walking over piles of skulls. Mm -hmm. It's big crunchy sounds. Mm. Uh, and the entire pile is going to begin to shift. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. a large white dragon will emerge uh, violently, skulls flying about in every direction. Uh, and you guys will see Skull Collector. <coughs> no. <laughs> Where? I don't like it. Huh? What happened to it? Why is it? <laughs> Where did you go, Skull Collector? Show. Hey, gone. <laughs> it's not showing for me. I did guess it's not here, it? guys. <laughs> oh, looks like we, we saw the picture. Down. We saw the picture. We just don't see the. Uh, you saw the picture. I get icon. to see the picture. I got the picture. Yeah. All you right, got it twice. On. It's right here. I see it. It's on top of the skulls. Hold on. Oh, there it is. Oh, there it is. It wasn't there before. No, I had to emerge. All right. Why don't I get to see the picture? Hold on, guys. I want to see it. <laughs> we got a token now, so. There's a picture. There we go. There he is again. Boop, boop. Hey, buddy. Oh, yeah, still as scary as the last two times. <laughs> <laughs> are we rolling initiative? Yes, you are. Oh. Ah. As it begins as soon to as you step start out. The counter. Mm hmm. Are you sure it's not a blue eyes white dragon? <laughs> <laughs> They're the deadliest kind. Uh, no one's been able to summon him. Oof. Oh, good, it's mind. first. <laughs> oh, this feels bad. Okay. Hey, Lenore is so close. I mean, I can add plus two and make that a 19. <laughs> Uh, it is going to crawl out and lift its wings and fly up over its pile <laughs> and 
go ahead and let's see here. It's going to use its cold breath attack in a 60 foot cone. So, Ego, Lenore, Ulrich, Nick. Uh, I intentionally put myself behind a corner. Does that help me at all? No, because here's what I'm going to do. Um, I am going to... Oh, I didn't it. Ooh, shiny. <laughs> oh, God. No! <laughs> no! <laughs> <laughs> I always forget that the thing. And I'm I, so, so I hate it. <laughs> I hate it so much. So I hate it yes. so much. So much for immersive gameplay. <laughs> oh what is God. the uh, save we need to make? Why can't I delete this stupid thing? <laughs> uh, well, we need to make a constitution saving throw, but Ulrich, yeah. keep your 20. Mm -hmm. I'll keep my 20, but that's the same so score. Does the ledge that I'm behind help me at all or not? Um, you should be able to click the little box and doesn't want to delete you. It doesn't you delete want it. to let me delete it. Time to restart once again. Yeah, hold on. I mean, you probably have to move the dragon. Yeah, I'm probably gonna have to. Rory? Why are you rolling with Rory? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I literally have selected as you go, like... Selected at all? No, it won't even let me select it. It's fine. You guys. Are Probably you. Stuff. Did you select the protract, the measurement controls, the protractor thing? The protractor thing. The thing that looks like an L. Oh. The <laughs> there we go. I had the wrong layer selected. Look, and then hover and delete. Oh, Here comes the cone. Do, 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 do. All right. There we go. Okay. The question still stands. What are we rolling to? Uh, you Const. are rolling. Yeah. Yeah, Constitution saving throw. Yeah. <sighs> That's one that I'm not good at. It's there. Yep. Yeah. A 19 is what you need. Dang it. Oh, wait, I have a plus two. I'm going to use the plus two to this for a 19. Okay. Uh, huh? I forgot to use one of Tony's minus Thank twos, you, so it's an 11, which doesn't matter anyway. <laughs> what the hell is that? Uh, 58 damage or half <laughs> on save. Hmm. That's spicy. Cool. Uh, ego faints. Um, I use my reaction to half that again with uncanny dodge. Okay. Are you still a glass cannon? I am, so I take more damage. An extra 2d4, I think. 3d4 uh, or something like that. 3d4, so let me roll Break that, that glass I was just doing math. Because Your glass elbow. Way to go. Okay. Okay. I'm still alive. <laughs> okay. Get back. <laughs> so, uh, let's see here. It did that, and then it is going to kind of lower itself down, and it is going to wing attack. This is legendary. Uh, please do. What? Why am I rolling that? Please do a deck save. <laughs> uh, same. Okay, Nick. And that is one failed death save for Ego. It's a, it been a turn dex, yet? it's a dex save. I don't think you take damage from this wing attack. Oh. I think you get moved. 
No, you take damage. Yeah, and you, um, get, and you get knocked prone. You take uh, 13 bludgeoning damage and knocked prone uh, if you fail against a DC 19. That's an AOE. Nick holds his holds his ground. Uh, within 10 feet of the dragon. Uh, 19 uh, and how much damage knocked prone? Oh, okay. He goes fine then. 13 damage. Okay, I will take half of that with my shield master. Okay. Okay. And then also, since it's initiative count 20, lair action. So, in 120 feet, I need so that's like all of you guys. Mm -hmm. Jagged ice shards are going to fall from the ceiling. <laughs> Uh, striking up to three creatures that I can see and a plus seven to hit and you will take ten piercing damage so let's see I'll roll it three times and I am going to do it against Kabu, Lenore and Ulrich So Kabu, 22 to hit, 10 piercing. 25 to hit, Lenore, 10 yep. piercing. Uh, and Lenore, add a d8. 11 to hit, you. Oh, wait, Ulrich, you're not in five so. feet, sorry. <laughs> uh, okay, so now uh, it is Lenore's turn. Okay. Um, all right. Still have to. Oh that's not what I wanted to do with that tab. Um, so that reduces that damage, and then I guess the card is not very specific. So I guess I roll that three d four every time I take damage. <laughs> um, Wasn't it sure. just the next time you take damage? Um, let me. I have it pulled up. So, however, that character now receives an extra three d four damage when attacked, which cannot be reduced by any means. So, uh, yeah, may as well. Eight. Still alive. Um, okay. So, question. Um, with that 28 stealth, was I able to be relatively undetected? Yeah, sure. We'll say the ice uh, just fell on you like I wasn't targeting you specifically. Okay. Um. So she will... Mm, I feel mm. like you would have popped up upon taking that cold damage, though. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Sleep good. Did the music stop for a reason? Oh. There's no mute. A uh, loop, rather. I will do this. There we go. Not that I really need to raise my anxiety any more than it already is, but you know, for the audience's sake. I don't know what I'm in the mood for. Uh, Lenore, what you doing? All right. Um... Okay, that's fine. Uh, that just won't be a disadvantage on the uh, saving throw, unfortunately. Um, still going to reach over um, the edge, and the shadow of her hand is going to elongate towards uh, this creature, and I'm going to try to cast Animate Shadow on this thing. Um, so I'm going to need a Wisdom save. Okay. Oh. oh, I rolled a natural one. So what is, uh, re-explain re okay. this spell to me, okay. or this ability. So, with Animate Shadow, you bring the light, the shadow of a creature you can see within range. 
Um, the target must make a wisdom save against your spell DC or their shadow animates into a malevolent attacker. For the spell's duration, the shadow stays attached to the target, sharing its space and constantly assailing the target, granting advantage on all attacks against it. In addition, that shadow deals a d6 necrotic damage at the beginning of each of that target's turn. Um, at the end of their turn, they can repeat that wisdom save to dispel the shadow and effect. I don't know what possible condition marker to put on my dragon for this. You mean uh, you don't have a plagued by a shadow demon? Plagued <laughs> by its own shadow attacking it? No, I don't have that. Uh, strangely enough. Uh, I do not. I wish I did. Clearly, I am going to have to fix this. Um, okay, so. Let me see here. Is that still in the thing you sent me? Yeah, there we go. Animate shadow. Bring the time. How long does this? A concentration up to a minute. So everyone has advantage on attacks against it. Mm-hmm. And. Uh, it has to take a 1d6 necrotic damage at the beginning of each of its turns. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I get a wisdom save at the end at of the each end of my of turns turn, yeah. to try and dispel my, my creepy shadow that's attacking me. Okay. She Very cool. sees that it took... Um, <laughs> oh, shit. Um, and start to go in this direction. So, let me... 30 this direction to go around hopefully um and is going to because she can cunning action hide okay it's going to legendary action tail swipe at ulrich sure Oh my gosh. A 24 to hit. That will hit. Uh, 10 bludgeoning damage. All right. Plenty. Huh. Okay. Um, and then it's Nick's turn. Uh, first off, Nick is going to take a disengage action as a bonus action as he runs around this corner here and takes some cover. Um, and as he does that, he is going to peek around the corner and fire some uh, his classic short bow at them. With advantage? Add advantage. Add advantage? How exciting. That's a 27 with a natural 20, I do believe. Okay, uh, a 27 will hit. Lovely. Uh, damage. Critical hit. And sneak uh, attack. And sneak attack plus lots of faces around. So you can uh, take it off. should be 5d6 now. It most certainly is. Uh, so that's going to be 34 damage altogether. Okay. Uh, it's actually going to be 42... 55, because you double the sneak attack damage. Yep, yeah, double should... all dice for crits. Oh, did you okay. not do that? That's so weird. I don't know why. So... <laughs> okay. So what? It's how much total? 55. Six... No, no, that's not right. Wouldn't you double both? The... Okay. Uh, the short bow doubled for some reason. The sneak attack did not. Well, the no, sneak attack, uh, the short bow. Neither, neither doubled them by themselves. I don't know why. Two d six. You rolled. You rolled two d six for your short bow. That's yes. uh, that's that's double damage. 
Yeah. Oh, is it? Oh, it is. Okay. Corpo is 26. Okay. So that's doubled. The sneak attack did. 5d6 should be. Mean. So 55, 55 damage. You're right. I see what you mean. Yep. That makes sense. Okay. I'm 55 damage. Okay. Excellent. Um, is there anything else? Uh, that ends my turn. I'll click the little button. Oh, or not. Oh, Kabu. Yep. Sorry. I was <laughs> beat you to it. Uh, I'll, I'll turn back to Chauncey. And I'll say, uh, Mr. Johnson, unless you've got something else to do, uh, I believe uh, Mr. Kit is ready to fire at will. Uh, I think it's time that we engage. And he pulls, are, out his, pulls out his crossbow and gives it like a magical like slide, and he'll cast br- uh, Branding Smite on it at level three. And he's going to try and open fire with the crossbow. With advantage. Uh, does a 19 hit? Well, it does. All right. So the damage that is going to be. Uh, normal. So that's seven plus. Plus 13. I believe it is. Radiant damage. Branding's my yeah, sure. Yes. So uh, and then. Yes. And then additionally, as part of that action, he is going to activate Arcane Jolt, and the magic that hits the dragon is going to arc over and land on Ego, and he will heal for 2d6. Cool. And I can roll that if you would like. Yeah, go ahead. Six six healing. (laughs) Okay. Very uh, good. And he's going to continue his barrage of normal attacks, unfortunately. Okay. Um, Ego. Uh, wait, uh, no, more so it's a 25. Uh, oh, wait, a wait, 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 wait. Oh. I thought you were done, Kavu. Nope. I apologize. Uh, that is just, sorry. <laughs> um, I will hit one more time, though, for seven more damage. Nice. And that's the end of my turn. Sorry. No. That's just... <laughs> I, I thought that. that was like, and he will continue his barrage into the oh. sunset, you know, like. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. No, uh, so I can do Arcane Jolt on my first hit, and then okay. I can keep going as a bone, so. Okay. Ain't hey, nothing stopping Kabu. No, Ego. This is, this is Kabu's first, like, actual, like, heavy-duty combat. Uh, Ego is... <sighs> <laughs> Get out of there! Frostbitten. Uh, he's going to run right here. Mm-hmm. Uh, so right there. And he's going to look around him, only really see Ulrich. Um, is Kabu within range? Nope. Damn it. Um, Can you move one more? Or? I can't. Um, still fly? You're still flying, right? Or is that at your? Speed? That's it's it's normal speed. Okay. Um, and so, <sighs> Ego is going to everybody moved away. This doesn't make sense anymore. Um. He is going to channel divinity uh, to give himself uh, two more prophetic rolls, which I'll roll in a second. Um, And then he is also going to look about and if he can... Does it have to be sight? Yeah, that you can see. I can't see Lenore. How's Ulrich looking? Uh, he has taken a third, well, almost half of his HP. Okay. Um, Thanks, but, you know. Yeah, he's just going to... It's so limited on spells right now. Um... He's going to use a third level spell slot 
to cast Mass Healing Word on him and Ulrich. Um, and we both regain 14 uh, points of healing. Absolutely. Excellent. Okay. And that is... That's his turn. Okay, I'm also updating... Uh, I'm trying to set it up so that you guys can also hover over each other to see your HP if you guys are... For if you are updating your HP within Foundry. Um, okay. If that makes sense. Did that make sense? Yes. So you can... Okay. It also updates if you do it through D and D Beyond. Oh, nice! Very yeah. good. Okay, so um, it is now Chauncey's turn. Oh, oh. Mr. Chauncey, hey, right? clear the fire. Oh yeah, sirs. But um, I'm just gonna make sure we're all safe and sound at this end. And first up, he's gonna cast. Leoman's tiny hut on his position. So it's a 10 foot uh, sphere. Bonk. On himself. And anything uh, within it is uh, covered by a dome where nothing uh, can get into. Okay. Nothing can get into it. Nothing magical can shoot out of it, but other normal, non-magical attacks can shoot out of it. It's also opaque from the outside, so it's going to be white like a little igloo and blend in with the snowy interior of this cave. So the dragon fella can't see whatever's going on inside it, and I can shoot this crossbow out of it. Okay. And it can't get me in any way. Unless Small it squad. digs down under and up. Um, Unless it comes underneath it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but all right. Um, awesome. Uh, is that your turn? Uh, I will also. Cause that is my action, which is a bit of a bummer. But um, I will use my last bardic inspiration on Ulrich. I'll be like, "Have at him, sir. He, you, you'll be fine." I would Very say. For the sake of mechanics, I would say it's a bonus action to crank up uh, the ballista um, and to be fired on your next turn. Mm -hmm. So we have that going. Okay. So the ballista that's on the map is actually on kit, right? Yeah, it is on it's, kit. It's, that thing is permanently part of the map, so it's not moving from the map, but it is currently attached to the top of kit. That's right. Um. Wait. Okay, Ulrich. All right. Uh oh, control factor is another object named moon petal. I disagree. Uh, I'm gonna swing for the fences. With moon pedal. I'm coming up, so you better get this party started. Exactly, that's a 30 to hit. That will hit. That. Yeah, all right. Uh, it's going to be eight. Uh, second attack coming in with an advantage for a 29. Uh, for 12. Uh, of course, place the unwavering mark on this, uh, on Skull Collector. Uh, and then we're gonna action surge while we got it. Um, so that is two more attacks. Are you rolling with advantage? I am rolling with advantage thus far, but that last one wasn't. So let's see if we can get a net critical on that. We can't, it's just a 29 to hit, which I'm gonna hope still hits. Yes. Uh, for another seven, <laughs> jeez, not okay. very high. Um, and then another, this is gonna be a 19 to hit. Uh, yeah, that'll still hit. Okay, very good to hear. Uh, for 13 damage. Okay, um, nickeling and diming this dragon down. <laughs> that is what I tend to do. Um, as he will just like, this thing kind of like 
shoots its tail into him. He's gonna take a moment, swipe one arm down and scrape the tail, and then just move right up towards its gullet and just lay into its head and face with a series of strikes, pulling its attention towards him. Um, and then, uh, bonus action, I'm gonna heal myself. Uh, with some second wind. Mm -hmm. Which feels very nice indeed. Uh, and that is gonna be my turn. Okay. Top of the round. Uh, so speaking of which, chat, it's top of the round. Time for some lair actions. Uh, freezing fog begins spilling out. Um, and it is going to be a 20 foot radius sphere. And it spreads around corners. And the area is heavily obscured. And y'all are going to take damage in it. And it is going to do it just right here. Um, right where? A 20 foot radius. And it's going to do it right here on YouTube. Awesome. Um, so you need to make a con saving throw for me. Okay. Sixteen. Please take uh, half of eleven cold damage. Okay. Uh, Nineteen. Why are you rolling as Rory dies? <laughs> I don't Why know. Does it say that? I don't know. Uh, okay. I don't know. Is that your actual, your con is plus four? Yeah. So it, you like, are it's, rolling it's, it's all as my, you, but It's it all says... my stats. It's all my stats. It's all like the good stuff. It's just right. for some Boundaries reason saying. Boundary's just freaking out. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so. Here, and I'm going to copy this into chat for you guys. Okay. Um, and then it is going to do frightful presence. So everyone uh, within everyone. Uh, make a wisdom saving throw for me. As this creature uh, oh, rears back its head and roars. Uh, hey, Chauncey, <laughs> what is your bardic inspiration? Uh, oh, it is very fun and spicy, naturally, much like his food. Uh, more specifically, it is... Uh, a four. All right. So I have a 14. Okay. So you just barely make it. Uh, 14's the DC. Um, so if you did not make it, you are frightened for one minute. Uh, and you can repeat and the saving throw. If you use my body for, for, uh, for a saving throw, you also get additional temporary hit points of the same uh, same number as I rolled, so you get four hit points as well. Fantastic news. Joy! <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, Kabu's using Flash of Genius again for himself. Okay. And this is, it's, it's, right, right. it's an uh, initiative turn at this point, right? This is a layer. Yeah. Uh, this is its turn. Yeah. yeah. It is okay, currently so in its, it's going it's to take turn. some shadow damage. Yep. Yeah. Do you want to roll it for me? Yeah, because of glass cannon, it's not just 1d6, but 4d6. <laughs> 18 damage. Ah! Okay. Yeah. As its own shadow tears, terrifies it. Yeah. Um, and then it is going to make a bite and 
claw attacks against Ulrich. Question, DM. I am in a heavily obscured area. Is it making these attacks a disadvantage? Oh, I really wish it would, though. I'm gonna say no because it's its own lair action and it is in its lair. Uh, it is perfectly comfortable in some cold, freezing, lairy fog of its own making. This is disappointing, but acceptable. Also, dragons have blind sight, so. <laughs> um, well, I so tried. let's do a bite to start. Okay. Just a little nibble. Yep. I'm going to uh, warding maneuver 26 these 26 to hit. I am warding maneuvering these. Uh, so I will roll a 1d, uh, slash r 1d8, and hope for the best. Uh, my AC is a 26. Okay. So, but meets it, beats it. Indeed. Take 25 piercing cold damage. Ow. Uh, and then I am going to claw attack you twice. I do have resistance. 25, no. Not with this new thing. Um... Mm. All right, and both of the claws are going to miss. Um, I need for to the record, warrior maneuver also gives me resistance to all any damage. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I like that laugh a whole lot. Mm. Uh, that's very good. My breath is recharged. So you can use it on this next turn. Um. Okay. So, and I'm also going to wisdom save throw uh, to see if I can get over this shadow haunting me. Hey, nine will not make it. Okay, I am still yes. plagued by my own shadow. <laughs> and we still have advantage on awesome. attacks. All the attacks, light Finish. them up till they glow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, I. Uh, you know what? I am uh, gonna just use one of my legendaries right now. I was waiting for it. Because why not? Um, I'm not leaving your uh, range, Ulrich. Uh, she, still in the air, well, he actually, still in the air is just gonna flap over. Sorry, dragons are always uh, femme in my mind for some reason, because they're glistening scales. As they but should be. <laughs> Uh, but he is going to just kind of uh, reposition himself in the air, and he's going to uh, legendary action uh, a tail attack against I, Ego. But disadvantage because I have unwaveringly marked them. Mm hmm. A 21 to hit? Um, Ego seeing this in his mind's eye flashes back into the present and forces that roll to become a four plus whatever the mods are. Which is a four plus six plus five, which is a 15 that does not hit. Okay. All right. Uh, then it is now Lenore's turn. Yep. Um, feeling the effect of uh, her spell fade. Um, gonna back out here like, what spell fade she's still he's still plagued by his own shadow oh really yeah the legendary was to flap and tail attack oh i well didn't you use the legendary resistance too? i failed the save though against the shadow thing Hit him. Yeah. let it up okay. yep we're gonna okay i'll go out swinging then Get them sneak attacks. I don't care if you swing, if you don't swing, uh, just okay, attack. So it's going to be a straight roll because heavily obscured area, but at least it's a straight roll, not disadvantage, right? Um, What's he obscuring? He's in this area fog. of heavily obscured fog. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, but oh, so we get advantage, but then we get also get this advantage. Mm -hmm. So it's just a straight roll. Well, but. Um, Can I ask, DM? You said that they did a wing. The dragon did a wing attack. They did a tail, a tail. attack. Oh, okay. Never mind. Yeah. Um, she's just got a knock and arrow. Just <laughs> see if it aims true. Uh, okay. Dude. Uh, Twenty-six. Ooh. 
Yeah, so well, 26 damn. will hit. All right, 26 will hit for 27 damage plus glass cannon for an extra nine. 36. So 36. 36. Yeah. Ouch, okay. Um, How's it looking? Not Hover great. over it. It's not looking great. And I can't tell because I goes or he goes over it. <laughs> still, mm-hmm. well, neither is yeah. looking yeah. particularly great. <laughs> yeah, still very scared of this thing. She's going to cunning action, dash back behind. This. <laughs> Twenty, thirty. Okay. Uh, and who and your is turn? Next? Let's see. Uh, that, oh, yeah, let me just... It'd be, that, it's it, time it, to bring it, in the closer. Mm-hmm. I can More of this. Like. There, we go. there we go. Nick! This is the, uh, the road power hour, I guess? <laughs> it is. Mm-hmm. It really is. A strong <laughs> mid-game pitcher, and now we just need the closer. 19 to hit. Okay, that'll hit. Plus, I need to do the 5d6 again. Sorry, I mm-hmm. always forget. No, that's not oh, what I said. <laughs> what did I do? Question. Good Roll? question mark. <laughs> my, whole screen, my whole screen slowly slid over. I was very confused. Uh, that's 23 plus 8, which is 28 plus 3, which is 32. No, 31. 31. <laughs> I Are wasn't you a math serious? Minor. 31. Hey, Nick. Ah! <laughs> How do you want to describe it? I let the last one fall pretty undramatically. I want this one to go straight through its eyes. Okay. Like out the other side. Wow. Awesome. Uh, that... <laughs> That dagger just flies across this room over the piles of skulls and through the pierces, heavily obscured mist. <laughs> yeah, pierces right through the dragon's eyes, but it hits with such force that it actually leaves the back of its skull and goes clattering against the uh, stone behind it. And the dragon holds for a second and then crumples onto the pile of bones skull scattering everywhere it is defeated and you guys are out of combat uh nick the oh, dragon slayer the over here <laughs> instead buddy hits the ground and then ballista <laughs> mister's ready to fire sir <laughs> Oh, bollocks. Nick lets out a <gasps> as he collapses hey. against the cave wall. Well, that was easy, wasn't it? It wasn't so bad. <laughs> yeah, you see, we just had to fight him. And then they dropped. Lenore staggers around the corner and it's like, sure, <laughs> it's great. The, it's the, dark the, cord. the icy fog uh, slowly dissipates and Ulrich just sees Ego with icicles sticking out of his ears, <laughs> nostrils like off of his chin, eyebrows just, yeah, real easy. Yeah, I just like imagine like the frost like spidering over the lower skin. Like, think Anna from Frozen, and like that's it. <laughs> like, she's, I... she's almost dead. I want to go up and crack an ice skull out of your ears. <laughs> Folks, we took down a dragon. You know what that means? We gotta find a sword. That and that Kabu is, runs off. Not- exactly. I think what I'm thinking. You, as he runs around, I say, I'm pretty sure all you're gonna find is skulls. It's in the name. Oh, maybe uh, there's a real fancy skull. Go ahead yeah. and, you know? and, and roll a, a search for me if you would like, like a, an investigation or a perception or whatever you want to do like to search skulls? about. I would what is your love some assistance. Yeah. Uh, well, what's your, uh, is it investigation or going to be perception? Uh, you know, I leave it up to you. 
All right. I had seven in my fine. perception, so. <laughs> Ooh. I don't know if you want to just assist and give me advantage. Or yeah, yeah get, do advantage right. if she's assisting you. Basically natural just 20. the help. Natural 20. Nice. <laughs> uh, even with that natural 20, you search and search, and it would appear that this dragon's hoard is skulls. Do I find a good one, though? I mean, uh, so many of these... They are human skulls. What do you mean, well, is that a good uh, there's, one? There's a few varied creatures in here. Uh, the occasional hobgoblin, bugbear, elf. You know, it's it's varied. Uh, just whatever kind of skull. And there's quite a few that are very high quality, you know, <laughs> excellent specimens of scullery. Uh <laughs> That you oh. can uh, choose to keep yourself if you would like. Yeah. No, it's I don't. I don't deal with body parts. If I'm taking any body parts, it's coming off the dragon. Exactly. Let's go. <laughs> but I still totally Scrooge McDuck them skulls. <laughs> uh, I mean, that's basically what the dragon did too. <laughs> um, I have a little bit of magic left. Let me. To help you with your wounds. Merci beaucoup. In fact, everyone, please uh, come here for a moment. Uh, it's probably best we're all a little healed. Uh, Nick, if you w wouldn't mind. Of course. Uh, of course, uh, link back. <laughs> and uh, Ego will kind of bow his head and all around everyone, just this spectral uh, dragon uh, begins to encircle a pseudo-dragon-esque. Um, and everyone will be healed by Mescure Wounds. The Vespa. Pitiful uh, 19 hit points. I will take it. I'm almost back to full. Same. I'm like about half. <laughs> and Lenore, you get a hand on your shoulder and you get an extra uh whatever this turns out to be. 32. <sighs> you'll see. Hey, so I'm back let's, to full. It's uh grab what we can off this dragon and Put all the gold in kit and get Alma's grace skedaddle out of here. Uh, well, there's still this hallway down here. I don't know if there might be more folks down there or... Um, I will tell you, since uh, we are out of combat and everything like that, uh, there are no sounds echoing back at you in this cavern other than those that you recognize to be from the actions of your party members uh and if you follow this trail this tunnel out you will see that it actually leads out to the other side of the knife uh the peak here in the white peaks and you can safely assume that you have cleared this dangerous passage uh of the terror that was threatening adventurers traveling this way uh, if you guys are staying and harvesting scales organs bone claws whatever from this dragon we can absolutely resolve that uh in downtime uh and i would assume that you chauncey are over there tending to the prisoners making sure they are fed and you guys can nurse them back to at least help enough to walk them outside of the cavern where eventually not as we as we hamish will pop that portal again and you can return to the safety of the hideout and make sure those uh prisoners get treated maybe to the baths with them so they can be restored to full health uh and sent to where they need to go um but good job, guys. You guys uh, solved my dragon puzzle. <laughs> you said the we thing. Hit it. We hit it real hard. Uh, I know there was like a side room, like close to where we first came in, where we first 
encountered the hobgoblins? Was there anything over there in the south? So that was just kind of a, a dug out tunnel for hobgoblins to lie in wait. Okay. But they heard you coming and actually skid skedaddled down uh, to hang out with the fire giant and ready <laughs> your your coming. All right. Um. So I will take you back to the hideout where you can return, get everyone safely tended to, uh, see to your own needs, uh, store away whatever dragon parts you got, and we will end the session there. Chauncey, you take the night off. I'll cook you something good for all your hard work. Oh, it's all right, sir. If I take the night off, no one's going to have no supper. And then where will we be? Rumbly tummies all night. No chance. Are you I'm questioning to... my cooking ability? <laughs> That's what I, I thought. I, I don't know about the rest of you, but uh, I think a bit of that hot spring sounds good right now. Yes, uh, a dip in the hot spring sounds fantastic. Oh, especially for uh, make it so for you, Oleg. You uh, you don't seem to have warmed up. You are still talking kind of slow. <laughs> are you are you saying there's something wrong with my voice? We. Oui. I mean, we could try All to right. fix. We could we could try to fix you, but I mean, damn it, Ulrich, I'm a battlesmith, not a not a healer. <laughs> Well, <laughs> Mr. Kabu, uh, does someone don't shove know him in the bath? Yeah, that's yes, please. Pulling him over there. Like... Nick is already pulling off clothes and dragging him along. Yeah, no, All right, so you guys can Ulrich shove Ulrich, Ulrich into the restorative waters of the baths and he will get healed, and oh. all curses and active effects will be removed from him. <laughs> hey, well. That was an experience. Killed a dragon, though. That was nice. <laughs> Good. Uh, excellent uh, work, everybody. You all played a part, no? Nah, at least I think so. Oh, yeah. We were all quite uh, engaged. Sorry, I just got fucking warped in the eye there. <laughs> Just gonna check on. I appreciate all of you. All right. Uh, all right. Well, to the hot springs. Hot springs. If I'm anyone, if, if everyone's done, I will go ahead and uh, take us out. Um. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Thank you for all of the tables and the decks and all the donations and subs and everything like that. Uh, this concludes session 10 of season two of Harper Investigations. Uh, this was based on Blind Cavern, written by DM Dave over on Patreon. Uh, and I am Luke Locke, and I was your dungeon master this evening. And make sure to tune in for more every other Tuesday at 6 p.m. Pacific. Our next session is Tuesday, May 25th. Players, would you like to go around in order of overlay and see yourselves out? I do believe that that makes me first. I don't know where the fuck <laughs> that voice came from. Oh, God. <laughs> to the baths with you. It's 2 fucking a.m. <laughs> Hi, man. That's what you all sound like I'm all the time. PK. Okay. Well, okay. <laughs> that hurts. That hurts a lot. But true, I guess. Hi, my name is Proper Nerdy. I'm a TPK staff maker. Lots, I make lots of pretty pictures and videos. Um, I will play from time to time, and one day I'll be GMing again. Um, I enjoy tonight, even just because I got to kill a bunch of bad guys, evidently. <laughs> <laughs> I sat around being like, uh, Nick only has a, the short bow, and that's it. But, like, evidently, it's doing something. So have a lovely night, everyone, and thank you so much for watching. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, to my right is Kaboo. Why did I say it like that? Jeez.
I need sleep. Uh, hey everyone, uh, Ikaj the York here was playing Kabu, the uh, goblin battlesmith. Finally adding the battle to battlesmith, so this is great. Uh, if you're interested in seeing more of me, uh, you can usually just find me on Twitter at Ikaj the Orc. Uh, occasionally I will find a way to speak my way into other games throughout TPK, so uh, if if I'm going to be in something, I'll let you know there. Um, can't wait, Ikaj. I can't <laughs> wait. Uh, oh. But uh, otherwise, that's it for me. So we will go ahead and pass it on over to Heck. Hey, guys. It's me, Sir Heckalot. You know, um, I played Lenore Galise, the Erganasi rogue who didn't die. <laughs> we were close. Chat, you saved my ass. But we're here. We're still here. Um, so, uh, yeah, you can find me at Sir Heckalot on Twitter and Instagram and in our lovely Discord at Sir Heckalot. Um, you won't see me in more TPK things until this Sunday with Total Party Recap. However, on Saturday and Sunday this week, you can find me on Neon Lights Roleplay, playing some more D&D as well as Only War, along with Turk. Um, so you should definitely check it out. Um, for now, that's all I've got. So let's uh, move on over to Dr. Tyrant. Hi everyone, uh, I am Tyrant. You can find me on Twitch and Twitter at Dr. Tyrant. I played Ego, the Prophecy Domain Cleric, uh, Loxodon. Um, a... That was close. That was close. Uh, it's always scary when your character gets knocked unconscious by a dragon's breath because you're like, <laughs> well, what now? Um, but uh, we're still alive. Hopefully on to bigger and better things. Uh, as for what I have coming up, I will be um, streaming Eco, uh, which is a doomsday prepping simulator, essentially, um, tomorrow uh, at, at around 5 Pacific, 5 p.m. Pacific. After that, I will be taking some time off until probably... Um, Monday, when we have the beginning, the start of Roundhouse Omega, uh, Roundhouse Season 2, which is the shared Monster of the Week campaign between Nat 20 and TPK Roleplay. Um, so if you're interested in Monster of the Week and you're interested in some awesome, awesome stuff, uh, come check that out. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, and then after Roundhouse, I'm pretty sure I don't have anything unless I'm forgetting uh, until Dark Echoes on Saturday, um, continuing our Curse of Stride campaign. So that is uh, what I'm doing for the next little bit. Uh, but let's hear from Turk. Well, I, this, I guess if you insist. Uh, hello, everyone. I am Turk, and I will no longer speak in this voice uh, because that would take a whole <laughs> long. Um, I am Turk Accented on Twitch and Twitter, if you care to follow there. Uh, I can't promise we'll be doing anything else this week, just based on how busy the schedule is going to be towards the end of it, but I will certainly uh, be sure to post about it on Twitch if we do want to finish up Enter Saga. Uh, of course, uh, if you want to see more of the things that I'm doing, uh, Thursday I will be over on Net20 for Roundhouse Alpha. Oscar Anderson is back. Uh, and uh all i can say right now is what i've been prompted after i'm gonna to have to read a whole lot of moral theory books in preparation for some decision making that's going to come up this season uh it's going to be intense or at least for me because i want to make the right decisions and keep everyone safe all the time uh that's why i play Ulrich a cavalier fighter whose one thing is just be a big dumb shield uh, anyway, uh, I will, of course, also on Sunday be over on Neon Lights Roleplay early on in the day at noon for Only War. Uh, I have a rocket launcher. I have a friend who's missing an arm. Everything is fine. Hashtag roof crew. Um, and, of course, that evening will be Total Party Recap where myself, uh, Sir Hank, who you know and is in on your screen, and uh, Cole, who is hopefully at this point in bed, uh, we'll be breaking down anything and everything awesome about TPK this last week, including this very episode. So, of course, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, hit us up and ask them, and we'll do everything in our power to get them sorted. Um, or show up on the day of the show and hit us up there as well. We always love hanging out with you. Um, after that, of course, uh, there is Curse of Strahd on the 22nd. 
with more Rectavio and then the Bard's Refrain as well. So be sure to keep it locked in for all that TPK goodness. Definitely uh, be sure to check out everyone else here's wonderful faces. And speaking of everyone else who has a wonderful ear, I'm gonna throw it over to Al. Hey folks, it's Al Uh Thanks for letting me be a little dumb pothead. Uh, it was fun. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do it again sometime. You can find me all the things at who I am because that's how it works. And uh, GG. That's done. I'm done. I'm sleepy. Uh, yeah. Uh, let's all I go complain. to bed. <laughs> you yeah. are our next level. Uh, the sun has risen over where <laughs> Al is, so we will, we will go to bed now. Uh, thank you all again for joining us. Uh, check out the schedule, the website, everything like that. Uh, if you go under campaigns, you can find the Harper page and read more. Watch season one, whatever you want to do. We have art there too. So, good night, everyone, and uh, thank you. Bye.